In the left passenger seat, we've got Dan the Widowmaker. In the right, Face Mask Steve. Oh, a solid left up from Steve. Blocked by Dan. Dan's got him up against the ropes. Going for a signature pole driver slam. But Steve's wriggled away like a greasy snake. And Steve's got him in a chokehold. He's got him. He's got him. Boys, pack it in back there. I'm trying to drive. Sorry. Sorry. Your mate's more likely to crash with passengers in a car. So don't drive him to distraction. Let a mate concentrate. The Bank of England also announced a boost in its asset purchase program target to £645 billion, made up mainly of gilts. And looking at China, perhaps showing again that it's marching to the sound of its own drum, despite the flurry of measures other countries have taken in recent weeks. Chinese banks surprised the market by keeping a benchmark loan prime rate steady when expectations were for a reduction. That indicates pressure on lenders' margins and is prompting calls for further cuts to policy rates. And Roger, you know, while we talk about 30 central banks globally this week cutting rates, there were some Denmark yesterday hiking rates, for example, that have made other measures in order to protect the weakness in their currencies. Yeah, there's a lot of action going on out there in various ways. I'm attempting to manoeuvre things into the right zone. We'll see how that plays out. But glooming over everything, of course, is that question of how long the downturn will last as virus cases surge in Europe and the US. The number of dead in Italy has gone over those reported now from China. Bloomberg's Alessandro Speciale reports from Rome. Its number of fatalities reached 3,405 as the pandemic's global spread accelerates. The country is still in full lockdown and Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte is thinking of making the current containment measures even stricter than they are. And even if the situation in the bond market has improved after the European Central Bank promised to buy as much as 750 billion euros by the end of 2020, the situation in the country remains precarious. In Rome, Alessandro Speciale, Bloomberg, Daybreak Europe. Now, the number of cases worldwide is now nearing 235,000. And according to new data from Johns Hopkins University, the number of deaths has now gone over 10,000. The coronavirus has struck at the heart of the post-Brexit trade talks between Britain and the European Union. The EU's top negotiator, Michel Barnier, has tested positive and placed himself in self-isolation. The UK's chief negotiator, David Frost, is isolating himself after showing symptoms of the virus. The two men have not met since the first round of talks two weeks ago, and news of their tests is likely to dash hopes of any immediate progress. This week's talks had already been postponed. And the oil price war that's been a roiling global energy Energy markets does look set to continue. Russia's President Vladimir Putin will refuse to submit to what the Kremlin sees as oil blackmail from Saudi Arabia. That's according to Bloomberg sources. The unprecedented clash has threatened to push the price of a barrel below $20. However, uh, there has been a bit of a leap in oil in the last 24 hours. WTI is up 5.7%, currently $26.67 the barrel. Brent crude just gone over $30 the barrel. 30.4 is where we find it. That's up. 6.8% narrow. Well, that's after a record 24% jump yesterday as President Donald Trump waded uh, into the price war as well. Let's get to the global news now with Leanne Gerrins. Hi, Leanne. Good morning, Naira. China's health authorities say all 39 new coronavirus cases in the country were imported. Bloomberg's Brian Curtis has more now from Hong Kong. Second day in a row with no domestic infections. China is now imposing tighter restrictions on inbound travelers. In the meantime, Beijing exonerated the heroic doctor who was reprimanded for warning about the outbreak. Dr. Li Wenliang later died Second of the disease. Day in a row with the no party domestic- rebuked the Wuhan police force and punished two officers. Elsewhere, Premier Li Keqiang says most of China is now considered low risk and people are now returning to normal work and life. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Day break you up. Now let's cross over to the U.S. California's governor, Gavin Newsom, has ordered all of the state's 40 million residents to go into home isolation. The move is the most stringent measure in the U.S. so far to curb the spread of the virus. It allows people to leave their homes for groceries and medicine, but otherwise requires them to limit their social interactions. Businesses not deemed essential are to be shut. 
India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi is urging the country's 1.3 billion people to stay indoors to protect themselves from the coronavirus. Bloomberg's Ruth Pollard says he's calling for a day-long self-imposed curfew on Sunday. His government also announced it was barring all international flights from landing in the country for a week and asked states to enforce work from home for all private sector employees. India so far has 195 confirmed cases, but there's widespread concern. The low number doesn't reflect the true rate of infected people. In New Delhi, Ruth Pollard, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And here in the UK, Queen Elizabeth is urging people to adapt their lifestyles and work together to protect the most vulnerable. Her address comes as the country steps up its efforts to tackle the coronavirus crisis. She and her husband, Prince Philip, travelled to Windsor Castle yesterday to practice social distancing during the outbreak. 144 people have now died from coronavirus-related deaths here in Britain. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. 30 minutes into the equity market open here in Europe, and we are seeing a second day of gains, more powerful gains than yesterday. The stock 600 up 4.8% after closing up 2.9% in yesterday's session. Green on the screen across FTSE, CAC 40, DAX, IBEX, and FTSE MIB. And if we look at US futures... They're also firmly in the green. Dow, S&P and Nasdaq futures all higher by more than 4%. So perhaps some tentative risk appetite coming into stocks. The 10-year Treasury yield slides 12 basis points, though. This is Bloomberg. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA, NYSE. SIPIC. Innovalon is a leading provider of cloud-based platforms empowering data-driven healthcare. Leveraging deep connectivity, the data of billions of medical events, and advanced analytics, Innovalon empowers the achievement of improved clinical outcomes and financial performance for thousands of health insurance companies, hospitals, doctors, pharmacies, and pharmaceutical companies, and the millions of patients they serve every day. Innovalon. Data has a story to tell. We give it a voice. Learn more at Innovalon.com. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's David Inglis. Let's bring in the CEO and president of the airline itself, Garuda Indonesia, head Irfan Setia Putra. Obviously, you want to understand how the situation right now is, is affecting your business. What assumptions are you working with right now on what the financial impact will be both in revenues and profit for 2020? As you may know, that Garuda is the national flag carrier, so we are not in the position only talking as a business, but as also a tool of the government there. Yeah. So uh, for sure, this 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 corona, the COVID nineteen outbreak impact us heavily, what especially our international are you market. With right now, uh, the as you may know, uh, we are not flying anymore to China mainland. But the most mm. uh, heavy uh, impact for us is actually the closing of Saudi Arabia, where we normally year on year flying more than five hundred thousand Indonesian for pilgrim activities in Makkah and Medina at Saudi Arabia. By closing that, basically, we are also being hit by around 24 flights a week to Saudi Arabia. So this 
this is the two things that's heavily impacted us. Uh, the other thing is also impacting us is our flight to Singapore, which normally we have around 10 flights a day, right. now becoming only three flights. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. An issue. Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning, this is Roger Hearing with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash and we're now 17 minutes into the European opening and the optimism we saw earlier in parts of Asia at least does seem to be reflected. Stock 600 up 4.4%, FTSE 100 up 4.2%, the CAC up 6.2%, the DAX up 6.2% as well. And the IBEX up 4.2%, and the FTSE MIB up 3.4%. So optimism there, it seems. And looking to the U.S. opening later, we're also seeing it in U.S. futures. S&P uh, futures up 3.7%, Dow up 4.15%, NASDAQ up 4.8%. But in the bond space, we are still seeing uh, U.S. 10-year Treasury benchmark, the yield dropping 13 basis points. Uh, currently 1.00 is where we find that. And looking to the dollar itself, which was, of course, uh, on ending really an eight-day rally on the dollar, 1271.78 on the Bloomberg dollar spot index. That's weaker, 1.5%. And also the yen, stronger, 1%, uh, 109.6. And the pound, 1.18, that's stronger, 3.09%. Also keeping an eye on all, 27.25 is where we find WTI. That's up 8%. Brent crude, up 6.8%, 30%. $30.4 the barrel. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Gerrans with more on what's going on around the world. Leanne. Roger, thank you so much. A coronavirus has struck at the heart of post-Brexit trade talks between Britain and the EU, with both sides' top negotiators now in isolation. The UK's chief negotiator, David Frost, is isolating himself after showing symptoms of the virus. This, according to a British official. Earlier on Thursday, Frost's counterpart, Michel Barnier, announced on Twitter he had tested positive for the disease. Now, Malaysia's former leader, Mahathir Mohamad, has also tested for the coronavirus. However, the result remains unknown. That's after coming into contact with a lawmaker who was later confirmed to have the virus. Malaysia is grappling with the highest number of infections in Southeast Asia, with 900 confirmed cases. And Netflix is temporarily reducing the quality of videos on its platform across Europe. The idea is to help ease pressure on on internet service providers as they deal with increased demand with more and more of us working from home or indeed in isolation. The platform is dropping the video bit rate for 30 days following calls from the EU. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg powered by more than 20... 700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Neira. Leanne, thank you so much. Now let's get back to the markets and joining us from Singapore to discuss all the action overnight and this morning is Cross Asset Editor Joanna Ossinger. Joanna, great to have you with us. An eight-day rally for the dollar, seeing it gain 8%. And we're seeing that falter a little bit today. The Fed has extended swap lines to nine central banks. Also, uh, the lockdown in California, perhaps adding a little bit to the dollar weakness. Can we take the sell-off in the dollar today as any kind of sign of an improvement in funding markets? We could perhaps. I mean, if you look at the eight-day chart of the dollar, it's still well up. It's still up 5 or 6% in that time. So this isn't a complete trend reversal or something, but it is looking like things are a little bit better. For instance, in Australia, you are seeing signs that the liquidity injections from the RBA are working, but we are still seeing a lot of nerves. We're still seeing some liquidity issues, so people hoping that as more of these Fed programs get started, they will really start to grease the wheels a little bit more and make it better. Yeah, we did see, I mean, a huge exit from the, the credit market, a $35 billion. I mean, it, it was something that's going to be really hard to, to, to deal with in, the, uh, in those sort of markets going forward. 
Right. And of course, central banks do have a lot of power to make things work. And the, these Fed programs are still coming into line. Um, for instance, the mutual fund liquidity facility isn't yet happening. So we need to get more going here. But yes, it's been a tough week. And the credit markets, even as things are starting to ease, it's still been a very bad week overall for them. Yeah, and the moves today uh, in stock versus bond markets, interesting again, Joanna, we're seeing bonds and stocks gain simultaneously. If we look at equities just for a moment, I mean, the S&P 500 hasn't yet broken through that Christmas 2018 low. The biggest ETF tracking the S&P 500 lost billions in a single day. Some say it's an indication of a potential bottom in the making as retail buyers exit. Is it too soon to start talking about the bottom? Well, hey, you could always talk about it, right? But it's interesting just... we had so in Asia and Europe yesterday, there were so many things going on. There were so many pieces of news, different central banks, different governments acting, and it almost quieted down in the U.S. session. And then the S&P 500 ended up gaining half a percent, which, you know, the moves recently have been 4 percent, 12 percent in either direction. So it was almost like the calm actually kind of may have helped with the mood a little bit. So that kind of makes it more interesting. And yes, it did hold that Christmas 2018 bottom. You know, the futures just went above 2,500. I guess they're a little below it now. But still, the mood is seeming a little bit more calm as much as anything. Maybe not optimistic, but maybe not as dire as it did earlier in the week. Yeah, and the volatility. I mean, the VIX front month futures down to 59 now. Um, I mean, it's not super high, but it's not. it's better than it was. Definitely. We had it at 80 for the past couple of days, and all of a sudden it's back down. Yeah, now at 57. And even the V stocks is down a little bit, although not quite as much. It's, I believe it's 78 right now. So, so we are seeing signs it's coming off. And of course, it's coming off from such high levels that you still have to say, well, this is not by any means rectified. But it does seem like, even though Fridays recently have been been kind of nervous just because people don't know what the weekend will bring. It seems like this one might be a little bit better, even though we do have the quadruple witching options and futures expiration coming up. It may cause a little bit of volatility, but um, it doesn't necessarily screw things up all that much. Thank you so much for joining us. Our cross-asset editor, Joanna Ossinger, joining us down at the line from Singapore. And taking a look at the markets now, 25 minutes into the equity market open here in Europe. We've been talking about a little bit of risk appetite coming back, but it's so hard to say exactly what's causing the daily moves right now. Up 4.6% on the stock 600. U.S. futures on the front foot. We're seeing yield slide in the U.S. and Europe. The 10-year Treasury yield drops 12 basis points towards a 102 handle. But dollar weakness is the thing to note after an eight-day rally, the Aussie and Pound leading the gains against the dollar. This is Bloomberg. With a Bloomberg Business of Sports report, I'm Michael Barr. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe reiterated his desire to hold the Olympic Games in their complete form and indicated he wasn't thinking of reducing the scale of the event or holding the Games behind closed doors. Speaking in Parliament, Abe said that the Games must be safe and secure for both athletes and spectators and added his goal was for the Games to be held without reducing the scale and with the spectators also able to enjoy the feeling of the event. The chief of the NBA's Players Union says the players are seeking clarity on the financial picture of this season suspended by the coronavirus. NBA Players Association head Michelle Roberts says when it comes to basketball-related income, I would absolutely like a do-over. It's not a happy time. The NBA doesn't have answers either. It all depends on how long it takes for the virus threat to subside. And that is a Bloomberg Business of Sports report. I'm Michael Barr. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. 
In today's volatile markets, investors need resilient portfolios to help handle the pressure. Through decades of expansions and recessions and changing interest rates, clients have turned to PIMCO to help them stay on course, no matter what course markets take. PIMCO, active fixed income solutions that aim to give investors an edge. All investments contain risk and may lose value. Investing in the bond market is subject to risks. Consult your investment professional prior to making an investment decision. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard? The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest editions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. Just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Vatil Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore or emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to the in the water? Well, you're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. A pack needs someone to follow. It's got to be important for somebody to have a breakout moment. Don't look now, but they're behind you. Imports decline 2.8%. Bloomberg Daybreak. Sources tell us that agreement is expected to include commitments on U.S. intellectual property. With Kieran Moscow and Nathan Hager. Could we see that play into the results and the forward guidance? Weekday mornings at 5 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business app, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Business is like a puzzle. Can you make a call given the swirl of data? Get all the pieces. They're getting mixed signals from governments. He's failed to gain traction. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com, and iHeartRadio apps, and BloombergRadio.com. Close as of this evening. Broadcasting live to London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 99.1. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 8.30 a.m. in London, 9.30 if you're listening in Paris, Frankfurt or Brussels. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neera Chayich. And I'm Roger Hearing, and you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 
We've gotten to Friday, Roger, 30 minutes into the equity market open here in Europe. We're actually seeing green on the screen up more than 4% on Europe's stock 600 after gains of 2.9% yesterday. The FTSE 100 up 3.4%, CAC 40 higher by more than 5%. Same for the DAX, the IBEX and FTSE MIB also in the green by 4% and 2% respectively. Yesterday, we saw a little bit of calm come into U.S. cash trading. The S&P 500 closing up five tenths of a percent and no circuit breakers for what felt like uh, the first time in a forever. Dow, S&P and Nasdaq futures higher all by at least 3%. Interestingly, though, while we're seeing this money move into equity markets, we're also seeing bond yields slide. A 10-year Treasury yield down more than 11 basis points to a 103 handle. The 10-year bond yield drops 8 basis points to negative 27. The 10-year gilt yield sliding 12 basis points on a 60 handle as well. And dollar weakness is the big story in markets today after an 8-day rally. If you look at G10, you're seeing every G10 currency gain against the dollar led by the Aussie and the pound. The Fed extending its swap lines to nine more central banks. That might have taken a bit of the pressure off, but also uh, the lockdown in California perhaps adding to U.S. recession concerns. And then taking a look at oil, biggest jump on record yesterday, 24% after President Trump said he might wade into the market. WTI and Brent continue to gain. WTI up 7.4%, 27.08. Brent above 30, 30 30.10, up 5.8%. And gold on the front foot, but heading for its first back-to-back weekly loss since September. Roger. Well, let's move on to some of our top stories today. And here in the UK, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, will today launch a massive rescue package for British companies and their workers. The Treasury is expected to announce measures to help companies retain staff through the crisis and to stop them going out of business. Figures released on Thursday show the number of cases in the country had increased by more than 600. And the number of dead has increased to 144. That's more than doubled over the past two days. And turning to Brexit, the coronavirus has struck at the heart of post-Brexit trade talks between Britain and the EU, with both sides top negotiators now in isolation. The UK's chief negotiator, David Frost, is isolating himself after showing symptoms of the virus, this according to a British official. Earlier on Thursday, Frost's counterpart, Michel Barnier, announced on Twitter he'd tested positive for the disease. And the pandemic has claimed the lives of more than 10,000 people around the world, according to the latest data from Johns Hopkins University. The disease is infecting people at a faster rate now. According to the World Health Organization, it took three months for the first 100,000 cases, but only 12 days for the next 100,000. The number of dead in Italy has now gone over those in China, which again reported no new cases in the outbreak's initial epicenter. And let's get back to one part of the market that's had big moves over the past 24 hours. The oil price war that's roiling global energy markets looks set to continue. Russian President Vladimir Putin will refuse to submit to what the Kremlin sees as oil blackmail from Saudi Arabia. That's according to Bloomberg sources. Well, for more, we're joined by Anne-Marie Horden from our New York bureau. So, Anne-Marie, the war goes on and yet the oil price now seems to be having a boost. So, uh, how do we should we read this? Yeah, the war on oil pricing is definitely not abating, especially with these latest comments from Moscow. I think you're seeing a little bit of price action to the upside because what happened yesterday here in the United States, President Trump yesterday saying he's aware of the oil price situation. Um, He says that they have the power over it and that he will get involved at the, quote, appropriate time. That was the key word there, really, the appropriate time. Um, Maybe they're giving uh, Riyadh a little bit more room to really put the pressure on Russia or they, we know the U.S. is looking to fill up the SPR. We heard from the Department of Energy yesterday. Maybe they want the lower oil prices. And then secondly, really astonishing, Texas, which in itself is the third biggest producer in the world, is uh, maybe floating this idea that they will curb their production. That would be a, a clear signal of a win for Riyadh and Moscow. If you see the U.S. looking to curtail production, that's likely why we did see a bit of a boost in the prices um, from those comments. On top of that, we are just seeing this, you know, green on the screen, risky day, which usually lately we have a sentiment trading across the entire board. Yeah, and it's fascinating because that Texas main oil regulator is weighing that for the first time in nearly half a century, uh, Anne-Marie. So today we're seeing um, oil extending gains after that record jump yesterday, but strategists still seeing that it could fall even further. How low can it actually go? What are the price calls out there? 
There's a lot of price goals, but as you say, they are much lower. Everyone pretty much says sub twenty dollars, especially on WTI. So City is calling for seventeen dollars. FGE and industry consultancy they see as low as twelve dollars, and even some traders I talk to say at least for WTI we could see single digits. Mizuho Securities they were saying that even negative we could see negative prices. Can you imagine, Nara and Roger, Luke Oil or Aramco paying a consumer to take oil off their hands? That seems an extraordinary thing. It'd be much easier to drive, that's for sure. Not that anyone is, of course, around here at the moment. But, Amory, I suppose the point in all this is it, it is a game of chicken between Riyadh and Moscow, um, and they both have the resources to take this all the way. Yeah, and that's what our Moscow bureau, with this, this amazing scoop they have, saying that Russia, though, is saying they're not going to be the ones to blink first. They do say that they're willing to talk, but I think the point is they don't want to be the ones to first pick up the phone. And I think part of this has to do with just who President Vladimir Putin is. This is a man that cultivates this image of a strongman. We've seen him in times of military, political, or economic struggles that even if it means pain for Russia, he will take it on before um, before giving in. We've seen this in the West with sanctions over the annexation of Crimea. We've seen it militarily with Erdogan and what's going on in Syria. So this is something that he is really preparing um, Russia for. I think another thing is he likes this power play. Last year at the June OPEC meeting, it was even pointless for me to go. Putin was in Osaka. He met with the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. And after that meeting, he announced that they had a deal. Amory Hordern, great to have you with us from New York. Thank you so much. In the meantime, we've also had oil trading legend Andy Hall saying he's well out of what he called a broken market. Oil's a broken commodity that's in long-term decline, uh, is what he's said, that a price recovery could happen, but it would be temporary. Amory Hordern with the latest on the oil news. For the latest in global news, here's Bloomberg's Leanne Gerens. Leanne. Nehra, good morning. Let's start in the U.S. Californians Governor Gavin Newsom has ordered all of the state's 40 million residents go into home isolation. The move is the most stringent measure in the U.S. so far to curb the spread of the virus. It allows people to leave their homes for needed items like groceries and medicine, but otherwise requires they limit their social interactions. Business not deemed essential are to be shut. Now, Asian governments fighting a new wave of virus infections brought by travellers from abroad are turning to high-tech wristband monitors, steep fines and even jail time. Bloomberg's Karen Lee says this is an escalation of existing containment measures. As places like Hong Kong, Singapore and Taiwan face the second surge from the West, they're doubling down on surveillance technology and implementing strict travel bans and stay-home orders that undercut their reputations as open hubs. In Hong Kong, Karen Lee, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Here in the UK, Queen Elizabeth is urging people to adapt their lifestyles and work together to protect the most vulnerable. Her address comes as the country steps up its efforts to tackle the coronavirus crisis. She and her husband, Prince Philip, travelled to Windsor Castle yesterday to practice social distancing during the outbreak. 144 people have now died from coronavirus-related deaths. That's here in Britain. Now, staying in Europe, Chancellor Angela Merkel's government is considering taking steps that would declare a state of emergency, a move that would permit unlimited borrowing in Germany to stem the fallout from the coronavirus. Bloomberg's Patrick Donoghue has more. Merkel's ruling coalition wants to ask Parliament for authorization for sweeping spending leeway, sources said. The cabinet is set to sign off on the request in the coming days. A historic move would be necessary under German law, which caps outlays under normal circumstances by a constitutional mechanism known as the debt break, which only allows for excess spending in crisis situations. In Berlin, Patrick Donahue, Bloomberg Daybreak, Europe. Global news 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Roger. Leanne, thank you for that. Now, with your morning sports update, here's Lawrence Mora, starting with the latest virus restrictions on the football season. Football in England and Scotland won't resume until April 30th at the earliest because of the coronavirus pandemic. Yesterday, announcements from the Football Association and the Scottish FA 
push back the original date from earlier in the month. The FA made it clear that they aim to finish the current season before they start the next campaign. Well, there could be an announcement later on how the domestic cricket season will look. Talks between the ECB and its counties took place yesterday, with all options being looked at because of the coronavirus pandemic, including postponements and playing games behind closed doors. The new county championship campaign is due to begin on the 12th of April. And that is your European sport. Coming up on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, Simon Harvey, Munnix Europe FX market analyst, will join us on the show as we see a day of dollar weakness after an eight-day rally that saw the greenback jump more than 8%. Uh, today, we're also seeing some green on the screen in terms of equities. 40 minutes into the equity market open here in Europe. The stock 600 continues its move higher, up 3.4%, so coming off the highs. But U.S. futures also on the front foot. Uh, S&P e-minis up 2.8%. 10-year yield drops nine basis points to a 105 handle. This is Bloomberg. You're fierce. You take care of business and don't hold back. Taking care of your health shouldn't be any different. You know when something's off. Don't ignore symptoms like fatigue, joint pain, and rashes. Listen to your body. It could be lupus. We're here to help you take control. Learn how at BeFierceTakeControl.org. Brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stone? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is, your reaction time slow way down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by NHTSA. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and to finish what I started to get my diploma. She just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer. You love tuning for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? Competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, 
Redefining financial printing. How your business day begins often depends on what happens overnight. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. I'm Caroline Hepke. I'm Roger Hearing. We expect more central bank action from the PBOC in a Russia rate decision on Friday. We track the drugs being developed against the virus. And our guests include Maximilian Kunkel, CIO for Germany at UBS. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, coming up at 1 a.m. on Bloomberg 1130, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system already. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now, there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps, and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Why is delivering the best client experience a top priority at BNY Mellons Pershing? Michelle Feinstein, Director of Client Engagement, explains. Today's investors want a financial relationship that's on demand, customized, and leverages the latest digital technology. At BNY Mellons Pershing, helping advisory firms and broker dealers create great experiences for their clients is our priority. Through our integrated wealth experience, we give you a high touch service, flexible technology choices, and expert insights so you can deliver a highly personalized experience to your clients at every step from onboarding to wealth planning to performance analysis and more and because we're part of bny mellon you'll benefit from more than 230 years of strength and stability at pershing we're personally invested in your success visit pershing.com to learn more about pershing's integrated wealth experience pershing llc and pershing advisor solutions llc are both members of finra and sipic Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Good morning, this is Roger Hearing with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. And the risk on sentiment we saw earlier in the Asian market certainly reflected uh, three quarters of an hour into the European opening. Stock 600 up 3.5%, uh, FTSE 100 up 2.2%, the CAC up 4.3%, the DAX up 4.9%. The IBEX up 3.6%, and the FTSE MIB up 1.8%. And looking to the U.S. opening, S&P futures up 3.2%, Dow up 3.6%, and the NASDAQ up 4.2%. So the risk on sentiment seems to be carrying on there. Looking across to the bond market, now earlier, of course, the treasuries were closed because of Japan having a holiday, but now U.S. 10-year treasuries 1.04 handled. That's uh, down nine basis points. The bunts, uh, 10 years, negative point zero eight, zero, negative point two eight. Uh, that's uh, down eight basis points. And gilts also down 14 basis points, 0.58. Also keeping an eye on the dollar after what happened, uh, the eight days of uh, a rally on the dollar. Dollar now 1.5% weaker, 1272.21 on the Bloomberg dollar spot index. And the yen uh, stronger up 7 tenths of 1%, 109.85. And finally on cable, 1.18 is where we found the pound that's 3.3% stronger. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Gerens with more on what's going on around the world. Leanne. Roger, thank you. Italy has overtaken China as a country with the highest recorded death toll from the coronavirus. The number of Italian fatalities has now topped 3,400 as a nationwide lockdown continues. Europe remains the epicenter of the disease with France reporting a 41% rise in deaths and Spain an increase of 28%. U.S. President Donald Trump will hold this year's G7 meeting by video conference. World leaders will meet virtually rather than face-to-face at Camp David, according to the White House. This comes as a grapple with the coronavirus outbreak that has rocked the global economy and left thousands dead. And one of the entertainment industry's most prestigious events, the Cannes Film Festival, will now be postponed. This comes as the coronavirus forces France into lockdown. The festival 
festival joins a long list of events worldwide that have been scrapped because of the deadly pandemic. Organizers are now considering pushing it to the end of June or even the beginning of July. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Roger. Thanks so much indeed, Leanne. Now, coming up next, our colleagues in the U.S. are getting ready for Bloomberg Daybreak. Let's check in with Nathan Hager. Uh, good morning to you, Nathan. Now, Good what morning, have you Roger. Got up for us today? Well, you mentioned lockdowns there. Uh, that seems to be a global phenomenon now. Much of the U.S. is shutting down, particularly in California, where the governor has pretty much ordered every citizen of the state uh, to stay indoors. We have team coverage this morning from coast to coast on how governments at the state and local level are responding to the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, even after all the historic ups and downs of the week that we've seen in this market, looks like we could be ending the week in the green. We're going to check in with uh, Marvin Lowe of State Street and Francis Donald of Manulife Asset Management on the risk outlook now for markets with the prospects of an economic recovery from this pandemic still far from certain. And we're also going to speak with Terry Haynes of Pangea Policy on Washington's response to the outbreak and reports that more than a few senators sold stock after they got sensitive briefings about the outbreak while President Trump was still downplaying it. Join me and Karen Moscow for all that as we... uh, Get you ready for Friday. Finally, Friday. On oh, Day. yeah, it's been a long week, hasn't it? It Thanks, has, Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> you bet. Uh, Bloomberg Day breaks up next, then, or if you're listening on London DAB Digital Radio here, Bloomberg Surveillance. Naira. Roger, let's get back to the markets with Simon Harvey, Monix Europe FX market analyst, who joins us down the line. Simon, great to have you with us. What a wild week. We see a little bit of a pause for breath, perhaps some tentative risk on across markets today. But in FX, uh, the key thing is that we're seeing a little bit of dollar weakness, perhaps spurred by the Fed uh, introducing, extending those swap lines to nine more central banks. Also, the lockdown in California adding to U.S. recession concerns. Is this simply a brief pause in the dollars march higher? Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be a question that can only be answered on, on Monday. But the, the main point is that these swap lines have been extended and they should at some point take some of the, uh, the, the, the stimulus away from the dollar rally. One place that they haven't done this is in Japanese um, cross-currency basis swaps. So Japan being closed today, you're not waking up to... The, the Japanese market setting the tone for, for increased US dollar demand. So even though we're seeing uh, for what, it's quite a substantial clawback, especially in currencies like sterling, Australian dollar, Kiwi dollar, um, this could all be completely kept on its head again Monday should the theme that US dollar liquidity shortages come back up and concerns about credit uh, accessibility, liquidity shortages, uh, widening spreads, uh, and so forth. The list goes on. But there are a few factors today which have given some that there are uh, there is belief in the system that, that, that there will be some sort of uh, some sort of bounce in these currencies and uh, as previously explained uh, on TV you have also seen a lot of central bank intervention explicitly coming out and saying that the currencies are too weak so you've seen the Norges Bank have their arm twisted today to come out and cut rates the Swiss National Bank yesterday said they're going to be intervening or they have been intervening in FX markets directly despite what the Treasury labelled them as a, the currency manipulator. And then you also saw a Bank of England governor, Bailey, come out yesterday and saying that the price of sterling is obviously a concern. So all, all of these factors coming in over the last 36 hours have kind of taken some of the, uh, the wind away from the dollar. But we're having to take every day as it comes in, in this current market climate. Yeah, it's interesting, Simon, uh, what it actually means. It's very hard to see quite often. But I suppose if there is uh, underlying this, despite what you say, some uh, reduction in the strength of the dollar going forward, where will we see that strength? Is it, is it sterling? Is it the euro? Is, is it the yen that will come back up? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely these currencies that have hit multi-decade lows. You know, they're always going to, to find a level of support when they're this cheap in historical standards. Um, you know, but it's very difficult to say where the actual percentages are going to be coming from because sterling actually performed very well for, for most of the week as other currencies sold off extensively. And then Thursday, everything just completely toppled uh, and the currency sold off to levels that we haven't seen since the 80s. So it's, it's difficult to see that we're not going to... We're not 
to start witnessing synchronized moves in percentage points across the board and look at different structural uh, or fundamental reasons why I can't selling off more than others because at the moment there is no data out there we, can, we can't assess the economic damage uh, the stimulus measures necessarily especially on the fiscal side won't support social consumption in these economies they won't support uh, the real economy in the short term however once the economic once the economic shock of the virus subsides then we'll be able to just uh, gauge on a more structural and fundamental level what currencies are undervalued and where the value is in, 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 in these rallies. So, I yeah. mean, at the moment, it's very much a risk a risk uh, parameter that's just driving this market pricing. Yeah, um, you know, when you can't really trade on fundamentals, and by the way, we should note that you have a conviction trade of being bullish on the dollar, which certainly makes sense, um, given what we've um, seen, Simon. When you can't really trade on fundamentals, how do you trade a market like this? Are you doing it via derivatives, options? Are you just setting it out? Um, fundamentally, staying very close to a computer um, is, is, is the one thing that we do advise because, you know, markets are chopping and changing by the second. So, you know, it, no, no matter how you want to play this market, I, 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 I advise high vigilance um, on that matter. With regards to what assets you're actually pricing, it, again, it's very difficult to decide where the value is. There's a lot of uh, dysfunction in this market. There's not necessarily rational price. There's, there's, it's very hard to find price discovery. Um, uh, and, and even if you do decide that that's the price that you want to go in in, in the market, uh, actually <laughs> managing to achieve that is also difficult. So, you know, I think most people definitely have taken a step back and, and they're only putting through what, what is absolutely uh, an necessity for them, um, for, you know, business functionality uh, and so forth. But, you know, taking this on a speculative level, that, that's a dangerous game that we don't necessarily advise uh, yeah. in this current market climate unless... You know, unless you're speaking to someone who's been through 08, they've been through the dot-com bubble, in which case they may be a bit more hardened to having higher uh, risk sensitivity. Great to have you with us. Simon Harvey, Munnix Europe FX market uh, analyst. And Roger, of course, yesterday the discussion was starting to come up more and more about intervention to weaken the dollar. But actually some out there are saying, look, that would be futile when you've got these funding woes going on. Um, and Deutsche Bank's Alan Ruskin uh, saying that it's better to step in when demand for dollars actually weakens. Yeah, because I suppose at the moment the problem is is one that uh, it, it, there are, dollars are so in demand and there's not enough liquidity in the market market more generally. But it is interesting to see how, how sterling has played, because yesterday you know, we did see sterling take a real hit, now seems to be coming up a bit. Maybe there's some sense that there is also uh, some hope in, in what the UK government is doing, what the Bank of England's done? Uh, I'm not sure I would read that much into it at this point, simply because what we've seen in terms of G10 currencies gaining against the dollar in today's session, it's been those more beaten down ones, the Aussie, uh, the pound, and of course the pound hitting a 1985 low earlier this week. Perhaps it was one of the ones that was prime to rally against the dollar if at any point we saw the greenback falter as we're seeing in today's session. But again, Simon Harvey from Munnix Europe saying to us, look, it's very hard uh, to answer the question of whether we'll see the dollar resume its gains until Monday. Hard to make sense of the market generally. We're seeing green on the screen when it comes to European equities. An hour into the equity market open up 3.7% on the stock 600. US futures higher. The 10-year yield slides. This is Bloomberg. Family properties and investments have been passed to the next generation. But while the business has evolved, has your accountant stayed behind? Burden Accountants and Advisors examines the latest business trends, market conditions, and industry issues to maximize your tax advantages and meet your financial goals. Let Burden use their insight to create innovative tax solutions for your family and your business. Visit BurdenLLP.com to get started. B-E-R-D-O-N-L-L-P.com. Burden Accountants and Advisors. We listen. We solve. We do. Data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. 
Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Friday, March 20th, 2020. Coming up this hour... 891 Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 1061 Boston. Bloomberg 960 San Francisco. Sirius XM 119. And around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business App. Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by SEI with an operating platform designed to support all major asset classes, diverse strategies, and investment vehicles. SEI is redefining wealth management. Learn more at seic.com slash IMS. U.S. futures and global stocks are gaining this morning. 501 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are gaining this morning up 105 points. Dow futures up 913. NASDAQ futures up 355. The DAX in Germany is up 5.5%. CAC in Paris up 5.2%. FTSE 100 up 2.8%. Ten-year Treasury up 30, 30 seconds. Yield 1.04%. And the yield on the two-year, 0.42%. NYMEX Crude oil is up 6.2 percent, up a dollar 56 at 26.78 a barrel. Comex gold is up about two percent. It's at 15.08.30 an ounce. Nathan, Karen, as the coronavirus outbreak spreads, communities across the country are clamping down on activity. We have Bloomberg team coverage on the fallout now, beginning in New York with Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Cases of the virus in New York City are nearing 4,000, 26 deaths so far. Governor Andrew Cuomo is fending off calls for a shelter-in-place order, but says he will not shut down the city. Let's just take a deep breath and make sure we're acting on facts as opposed to acting on fear. Cuomo's ordering businesses to keep 75% of workers at home. In New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy expects cases to reach into the many thousands. He's ordered personal care businesses to close, including barbershops, hair and nail salons, and tattoo parlors. I'm Michael Barr in New York. Now here's Joan Doniger in our Bloomberg 1061 Boston Newsroom. Governor Charlie Baker is activating the Massachusetts National Guard as confirmed cases in the state top 300. He's also promising a big increase in testing for the virus. Over the course of the next several days and weeks, there will be an enormous increase in the amount of testing that takes place on a daily basis. The first high-capacity drive through testing facility in Massachusetts is now open at a CVS parking lot in Shrewsbury. I'm Joan Doniger. Now, here's Martin DeCaro from our Bloomberg 991 newsroom in Washington. 73 D.C. firefighters, paramedics, and emergency medical technicians are reportedly self-quarantined after potential exposure to the virus. Metro Transit Police closed two rail stations last night to discourage crowds from heading to the Tidal Basin to view the cherry blossoms. The district reported 32 new patients, nearly doubling the prior total. Cases now number 72. I'm Martin DeCaro in Washington. Now here's Amy Morris in Germantown, Maryland. Governor Larry Hogan signed emergency legislation opening previously closed medical facilities across the state and he's banning social gatherings of more than 50 people. I have just enacted an executive order to shut down all bars, restaurants, movie theaters, and gyms across the state. The governor's emergency measure also offers job protections for workers affected by the outbreak, as both Maryland and D.C. have reported a spike in unemployment claims. Maryland added 22 cases yesterday. That brings the state's total infections to 108. I'm Amy Morris in Germantown, Maryland. Now here's Ed Baxter in California, where Governor Gavin Newsom is issuing a statewide shelter-in-place order. Newsom says about 56%, about 25.5 million people will become infected. He says he's written to the president asking for help. Moreover, he says we have community-acquired transmission in 23 counties with an increase of 44 community-acquired infections in 24 hours. He says in some parts of the state, the case rate is doubling every four days. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. 
All right, Ed, thank you. Meantime, in Europe, Italy remains the epicenter of the outbreak. Deaths there now number more than in China as the country remains in lockdown. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Alessandro Speciale in Rome. The government is thinking of imposing even harsher restrictions, for example, just going out once per day for food shopping and all that, but it's not clear whether this will be enough to slow down the growth of the virus in some regions. The situation is particularly worrying in the north. There are reports of hospitals really at capacity, not enough intensive care units for all the people coming in with the virus. One thing that is not clear is why the death rate in Italy has been so high compared to China. And infections in Italy have now eclipsed 40,000. Deaths number more than 3,400. Meantime, in the UK, cases of COVID-19 have jumped 25% in one day. For the very latest, we're joined live by Bloomberg's Ewan Potts in London. Good morning, Ewan. Good morning, Nathan and Karen. As confirmed cases of coronavirus top 3,200, the UK's Prime Minister has warned he may need to tighten restrictions in the capital. Like the rest of the country, Londoners have been asked to limit social contact and work from home. Sources tell us the government is now considering ordering bars, restaurants and shops to close. The country's health secretary says the UK is still only at the beginning of the virus outbreak. Live in London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ewan, thank you. In China, ground zero for the outbreak. We're seeing more signs the outbreak is slowing. Officials say today's 39 new cases all came from outside of the country. And here with details is Bloomberg's Brian Curtis in Hong Kong. Second day in a row with no domestic infections. China is now imposing tighter restrictions on inbound travelers. In the meantime, Beijing exonerated the heroic doctor who was reprimanded for warning about the outbreak. Dr. Li Wenliang later died of the disease. The party rebuked the Wuhan police force and punish two officers. Elsewhere, Premier Li Keqiang says most of China is now considered low risk and people are now returning to normal work and life. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you, Brian. Worldwide deaths from the virus have surpassed 10,000. According to data from Johns Hopkins University, the World Health Organization says the disease is now infecting people at a faster rate. Straight ahead, we bring you the latest world and national news. This is Bloomberg. At 5.07 on Wall Street, we bring in Michael Barr to get a check of what else is happening worldwide. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Nathan. A fourth member of a Freehold, New Jersey family has died from COVID-19. Within a week, Elizabeth Fusco, who lost her mother and three siblings, is beyond grief and says words cannot describe the pain and horror of what happened to her family. It's like the second we start to grieve about one, the phone rings and there is another person gone, taken from us forever. Two other relatives are in critical condition. California's governor has tested the stay-at-home orders and has issued it for 40 million people in the most sweeping move of any state yet to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Governor Kevin Newsom says that unless the rise in cases of COVID-19 slows, it might overwhelm the state's medical system. As a nation state, 40 million strong, uh, we've been organized around an attack rate, as we refer to it, of about 56 percent, that the virus uh, will impact about 56 percent of us. You do the math in the state of California, that's a particularly large number. Newsom says people will be able to shop for food and seek medical care, but should practice social distancing. President Trump has told the FDA to see if it can expand the use of a decades-old malaria drug as an experimental treatment for coronavirus patients. The president says the drugs chloroquine and resdestivir have gotten federal approval. However, they haven't been approved for treating COVID-19. This is by prescription, uh, but states can issue it, and we have it approved by the FDA, and I think it's going to be uh, something that will be very interesting to see. We're going to know very quickly, but we've had some very good tests, uh, and it's been successful. So let's take a look. To me, that's probably the most important thing that anybody can say, if it works, Uh, but uh, we have it approved for safety. President Trump has canceled the G7 meeting at Camp David scheduled for June because of the coronavirus. In a White House statement, the president plans to hold the meeting via video conference with the G7 leaders instead. 
Global news 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael. Thank you. It's 5.09 on Wall Street. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. Nathan, the coronavirus continues to affect the sports world. More positive tests. Longtime Saints coach Sean Payton, Celtics starting guard Marcus Smart, and two members of the Lakers who have not been identified. Payton was seen at a horse racing track in Arkansas last weekend, surrounded by people, said he did not show respiratory symptoms. Smart said he feels fine. The Celtics played Utah March 6th. The Jazz, of course, have two players with it. And after it was learned the Nets have four, that's when the Lakers got tested their last as to how and why when others have such trouble. And, of course, more positive tests make the games returning anytime soon seem more unlikely. NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman in an interview on ESPN said they can go later if need be. He's not sure how late. In other words, they can extend the season, which normally ends in early June. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver told ESPN that he doesn't have a clue as to what a return date will be. He said it will only come with the okay from public health officials. NFL News, the Rams released two veterans, running back Todd Gurley, linebacker Clay Matthews, veteran QB Joe Flacco, one year in Denver, now released. The Lions traded one of their top players, cornerback Darius Slay, to the Eagles, and the Giants have their backup to starting QB Daniel Jones. It's Colt McCoy, who had been with Washington. For the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stanfield. Nathan? All right, John, thank you. And please join us tonight for Bloomberg's Business of Sports show. Will there be a Tokyo Olympics this summer? Has the coronavirus changed the way we watch sports forever? We'll be speaking with Rick Burton, Syracuse University's professor of sports management. You can catch that conversation tonight at 7 and tomorrow at 11 a.m. on Bloomberg Radio or subscribe to the Bloomberg Business of Sports podcast. S&P futures higher by about 4% now, up 95 points. Dow futures a gain of 859. NASDAQ futures hit limit up earlier. They're now higher by 355 points. The DAX in Germany up 5.6%. CAC in Paris higher by 5.5%. Tenure up 31 30 seconds, yield 1.03%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So, for the love of the outdoors, go to smokybear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. 25 years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain, a company whose incredible innovations changed the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering the innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. The attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can't. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm 
Steve Meyer, President, Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize. A lot of people aren't aware that TuneIn lets you listen to the same terrestrial stations that you pick up on your FM AM dial, except you can hear them from anywhere. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Arrow enjoy each other's company. Most of us don't speak Mandarin. John, do you speak Mandarin? I did not speak okay, Mandarin. I just wanted to check that. Almost as much as they enjoy grilling economic experts. When this is over, do you bounce back or is there a lasting weakness to it? Which means that you will enjoy listening. If things get worse, we're ready to do more. Bloomberg Surveillance. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern. On Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg. The world is listening. No company wants to be involved in an international dispute. But when disagreements arise, you need expertise at your side. Take a closer look at ICDR, the International Center for Dispute Resolution. Backed by the longevity and strength of the American Arbitration Association, the ICDR is the world's leading provider of cross-border dispute resolution services, handling more cases than any other institution. Find out why global expertise matters. Visit ICDR.org. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here is David Inglis. Let's bring in the CEO and president of the airline itself, Garuda Indonesia, Head Irfan Setiaputra. Obviously you want to understand how the situation right now is, is affecting your business. What assumptions are you working with right now on what the financial impact will be both in revenues and profit for 2020? As you may know that Garuda is the national flag carrier, so we are not in the position only talking as a business, but as also a tool of the government. Yeah. So uh, for sure, this, this, this corona, the COVID-19 outbreak impact us heavily, especially our international market. Uh, as you may know, uh, we are not flying anymore to China mainland, but the most mm. uh, heavy uh, impact for us is actually the closing of Saudi Arabia, where we normally year on year flying more than 500,000 Indonesian for pilgrim activities in Makkah and Madinah at Saudi Arabia. By closing that, basically, we are also being hit by around 24 flights a week to Saudi Arabia. So this, this is the two things that's heavily impacted us. Uh, the other thing is also impacting us is our flight to Singapore, which normally we have around 10 flights a day, right. now becoming only three flights. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Stocks and bonds are climbing globally alongside U.S. stock index futures, ending the week in a sea of green while the dollar halts an eight-day rally. As investors review the unprecedented measures to shield jobs and economies from the coronavirus, oil extending a rebound. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are up 93 points this morning. Dow futures up 840. NASDAQ futures up 354. The DAX and Germany is up 5.9 percent. CAC in Paris up 6.3 percent. The FTSE 100 up three and a quarter percent. Ten-year Treasury is up one. The yield 1.03 percent. The yield on the two-year 4.40 uh, percent. That is, and the 30-year yield 1.62 percent. Nymex crude oil is up 7.9 percent, up a dollar 99 at 27.21 a barrel. Comex gold up 2.2 percent, up 32 dollars 30 cents at 15.1090 an ounce. The euro 1.0781 again the dollar, British pound 1.1824, and the yen is at 109.91. The VIX 
1-800-273-0330. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael, good morning. on Wall Street. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. As we continue to watch the wild swings in markets that we've seen uh, pretty much all week long, we're joined now by Marvin Lowe, global macro strategist at State Street. Good to talk with you this morning, uh, Marvin. Saw that uh, NASDAQ futures hit limit up once again overnight and uh, futures across the board poised for gains. What signs are you looking for that this could perhaps be a sustainable lift to markets or is this just more of the same of the volatility we've seen with coronavirus? You know, well, well, certainly, let's hope that uh, let's hope that we're starting to find a bottom. Um, I'm not I'm not necessarily convinced that we're we're done with the volatility. Certainly, there's a lot of things that um, need to be worked out, both from the virus perspective as well as from a market healing perspective. Um, but I've been keenly focused on funding. I've been keenly focused on the dollar, uh, particularly you know the dollar strength, which to me is dollar hoarding in terms of um, you know people not feeling comfortable enough to to actually take risk. And I think that's been one of the problems in this market. It's a little bit better today. Um, effectively, everyone launched bazookas this week from the central bank perspective, so it's nice to see some of it finally make its way in the market. But um, given the gains uh, versus what was done over the past week, week and a half, um, it's it's just tepid at this point. So um, it's it's nice if we could end in the green at the end of the week. Uh, but you know, really expect volatility to continue. I think you know for uh, at least a little while more. <laughs> Let's hope it's just a little while more. Yeah, certainly dollar strength is been eye-popping over the last eight sessions. We've had eight straight sessions of gains for the dollar. Now seeing some pullback in the greenback. Is that supportive of equities? Is that something that can be sustained? Um... Yeah, you know, you know. Ultimately, I think I think the pullback in the dollar is just a sign that there's uh, a little bit more comfort with taking risk rather than just hoarding cash. Um, you know, a lot of the concern around that was just the unprecedented nature, the unprecedented nature that um, businesses around the world are going to be impacted, and it's not just specific industry or companies. And trying to get a handle on that has really caused um, a lot of concern uh, amongst the investment community at a time when uh, when we're all scattered around the world working from home in, in a manner that, you know, I don't think anybody ever anticipated. So you've got a lot of things coming together, um, but, you know, less dollar hoarding ultimately to me is a sign that we could um, at least take steps in trying to figure out where valuation should be. Well, where are you uh, thinking that risk might be most attractive? What sectors, uh, what parts of the world at this point? You know what? I, I I think I think it's it's capital preservation at, at this point. Um, you know, if we're gonna kind of look beyond um, uh, the virus and, and how the world looks uh, once we start to heal, um, you know, certainly I think lower interest rates are something that's here to stay. So you know, let's let's kind of keep that in our thesis. Um, there's going to be a lot of monetization in debt. Um, the yield curve itself has steepened uh, a whole lot. You know, does uh, uh, but but it's been steepening uh, because um, of a drop in inflation protection in, in the tips market you know think about that if we have massive amounts of stimulus um i think that i think that you know people pay for growth so you know it's hard to like jump back into the concept of growth the way we had before but you know there, there are companies that have outgrown because they've got product lines that make sense um uh, in in a slower growth world and i think that that's kind of um the the type of thought process that we're going through in trying to to um, pick through the uh the carnage if you will now, we're certainly seeing quite a bit of yield steepening uh, in U.S. Treasuries right now with the 30-year well above 1% once again. Where do you see bond yields going as uh, uh, central bank moves start to take hold? You know what? Um, I, I think I think that they I, I certainly think that they can go higher just because of um, the ceiling process, because of all of the stimulus that that is going to come from the fiscal level. But but I don't see them rising that much more. You know, it, it, it's almost we're going to get to a point. Um, you know, not necessarily soon, but you do get to a point where it's um, um, where it starts to be detrimental for the economy. It, it winds up being detrimental for for companies. Remember when we were concerned that yields were going to rise too too much? Um, you're going to find this balance. I, th I think it's higher than here, but not a whole lot higher than here. In our last minute here, Marvin, uh, wh where do you see uh, fiscal stimulus going at this point? We've heard a lot of talk about you know one point three trillion dollar number, where the uh, 
fiscal stimulus could be targeted in terms of, uh, you know, checks being written for individual taxpayers. What moves would you like to see that would give the market some uh, some comfort? Um, I, you know, I'd, li- I'd like to see, it, it's more for me that we're getting the right type of action coming out of the politicians, the right type of action coming out of Washington. You know, certainly we've come uh, an incredible way in just seeing uh, the two parties come together. Um, if it makes sense, I think that's what the market wants. Um, the unprecedented nature of, of both what's going to happen to companies um, and uh, the resi- the, you know, the, the regular American needs them for them to take uh, strong action. So the, the amounts are frightening to think about, but the amounts ultimately are necessary, I think. Thanks, Marvin. Good talking with you this morning. Hope you have a good weekend. Marvin Lowe is global macro strategist at State Street joining us this morning. A morning uh, with green on the screen with S&P futures higher now by 102 points. Dow futures up 890. NASDAQ futures are higher by 355 points after hitting a limit up. Uh, in the overnight hours. The DAX in Germany up 5.6%. CAC in Paris higher by 5.9%. Ten-year up 30, 30 seconds. 1.04% is the yield on a 10-year note. Two-year Treasury 0.41%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stock futures point to more gains after a slightly higher close on Wall Street yesterday. The S&P 500 gained a half of a percent. The Dow was up 1%. The Nasdaq jumped just over 2%. And the market managed to trade without setting off any circuit breakers, which kicked in twice earlier this week and twice last week. The rally came as investors assessed the latest fiscal and economic measures imposed by policymakers responding to the coronavirus. Oil continues to gain after surging the most ever in New York, rising. 24 percent as President Trump said he'd get involved in the standoff between Saudi Arabia and Russia that has rocked crude markets. Goldman Sachs is predicting that filings for U.S. unemployment benefits are poised to surge to a record of two and a quarter million this week. With businesses shutting down because of the coronavirus containment efforts, jobless claims are already climbing by 70,000 to 281,000 last week. That was the biggest gain since Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion or your race or because you have children or a disability. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live-breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. In partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. 
Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA. NYSE SIPIC. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies? Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. If morning is not your favorite part of the day, then maybe you're not listening. What would you expect from Bezos next? Bloomberg Surveillance. We finally start to make a move. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And it's 5.30 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Karen Moscow. I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by BNY Mellon's Pershing. Learn why the world's most sophisticated advisory firms and broker-dealers rely on Pershing to help them improve profitability, create efficiency, attract talent, and manage risk at Pershing.com. We're just about four hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. Global stocks are climbing as the dollar weakens sharply. That ends an eight-day rally for the greenback and leaves investors wondering if we finally reached a bottom. Nancy Tangler is chief investment officer at Leffer Tangler. We're seeing good companies behave better than the overall market. In the beginning of the downturn, everything sold off. And now our stocks are starting to outperform. And that's usually a sign that we're at least getting close to a bottom. And right now, S&P futures are up 3.8%. In Europe, the stock 600 is up 4 and a third percent and bond yields are falling with the yield on the 10-year treasury at 1.04%. Well, the Senate is preparing another round of stimulus. The latest plan includes $1,200 tax rebates for individuals making less than 100000 a year. As the coronavirus spreads, President Trump is being asked if the measure is enough. If we can stop it in its tracks, the virus, uh, it's plenty. If we can't, we'll have to go back and talk. Do you, do you support the idea of the government taking an equity stake in certain companies? I do. I really do. My President Trump says the government could take stakes in firms that get bailouts. Right now, the plan under consideration provides $208 billion of loans for companies suffering from the pandemic, including $58 billion for the airline sector. Worldwide deaths from the virus have now surpassed 10,000. That's according to data from Johns Hopkins University. The World Health Organization says the disease is infecting people at a faster rate than before. Cases in the U.S. currently number more than 12,000 with 220 deaths. In the meantime, in Europe, Italy remains the epicenter of their outbreak. Deaths now number more in Italy than in China as the country remains in lockdown. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Alessandro Speciale in Rome. The situation is particularly worrying in the north. There are reports of hospitals really at capacity, not enough intensive care units for all the people coming in with the virus. One thing that is not clear is why the death rate in Italy has been so high compared to China. Infections of Italy have now eclipsed 40,000 in deaths, number more than 3,400. And again, S&P futures up 93 points this morning. Dow futures up 838 and NASDAQ futures up 355. The DAX in Germany is up 5.5%. Ten-year Treasury up 31.30 seconds. The yield 1.03%. And NYMEX crude oil up 7.9%. And straight ahead, we have the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. All right, Karen, thank you. 5.33 is the time now on Wall Street, and it's time to bring in Michael Barr to get a check of what else is going on around the world. Michael? Thank you very much, Nathan. The coronavirus has taken a heavy toll on a New Jersey family. A fourth member of the Fusco family has died within a week. 
Elizabeth Fusco lost her mother and three siblings. She says her world began to crash down on her Tuesday morning. I woke up Tuesday morning, the baby of 11. My mom called me and said, Lizzie, I don't feel good. Rita don't feel good. Tony don't feel good. Can you come? Can you come help us? In New Jersey, there are close to 320 COVID-19 cases. The tens of thousands of transit workers who help get New Yorkers around are calling for greater protection with at least 23 MTA workers testing positive for COVID-19 so far. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the MTA will continue running. However, this train worker is suggesting that Cuomo is playing Russian roulette with their lives. The risk is if he runs these trains without any members of the train crews being checked for the coronavirus, he's going to have no service. In New York City, cases of coronavirus have hit 4,000 with 26 deaths. The Metropolitan Opera is canceling the rest of its season and stopping the pay of the orchestra, chorus, and other unionized employees at the end of the month due to the virus. California Governor Gavin Newsom ordered that all of the state's 40 million residents go into home isolation starting last evening, marking the most stringent U.S. effort yet to stymie the spread of the coronavirus. During a news conference, Newsom said, Said, this is a moment where we need some straight talk. This is not a permanent state. This is a moment in time. And we will meet this moment together. And we will look back at these kinds of decisions as pivotal decisions. The shelter-in-place order allows people in California to leave their homes for needed items like groceries and medicine. A $1 trillion-plus bill has been introduced in the Senate to get Americans direct aid. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. The plan is for bipartisan talks today. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says no middleman. Direct financial help for Americans. Senate Republicans want to put cash in the hands of the American people. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer welcomes that, but says the bill also needs to include aid for hospitals. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan? All right, Michael, thank you. It's just before 536 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. Nathan, the list of NBA players who've tested positive the coronavirus continues to grow. Started with Rudy Gobert, then his Utah teammate Donovan Mitchell, Christian Wood of the Pistons, Kevin Durant, three Brooklyn teammates, and now add Marcus Smart of the Celtics. What's up, everyone? So I just found out I tested positive for the coronavirus. I'm okay. I feel fine. Um, I don't feel any of the symptoms. Uh, but I can't stress enough practicing social distancing and really, you know, keeping yourself away from a large group of people um, and just really washing your hands and, and, and help protect yourself and help protect others by protecting yourself. Thank you. Two Lakers have tested positive. Their identity is not known. So has longtime Saints coach Sean Payton. That's the first from the NFL whose teams have been signing free agents and they want language put in the contracts protecting them if the player gets a positive test. Physicals in many cases are not going to take place for months due to the virus. Tom Brady's contract with Tampa Bay won't be signed until his physical. He's said to be trying to set one up in New York. Cam Newton expected to be released soon by Carolina. He hardly played last season with an injured shoulder. Will teams want him if they can't have a doctor take a look at him? The Giants have what appears to be an ideal backup to starting quarterback Daniel Jones. Colt McCoy, nine-year veteran, the last five in Washington. Giants also signed Nate Ebner. Eight years with the Patriots playing special teams. New Giants coach Joe Judge coached him in New England. Todd Gurley wants to start running back with the Rams. They released him. Joe Flacco wants a Super Bowl winning QB in Baltimore. One year in Denver, he's been released. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashauer. Nathan? Thank you, John. It's 537 on Wall Street. And the latest edition of Bloomberg Business Week is on newsstands now with the entire issue devoted to the coronavirus, including the benefits of social distancing. Justin Fox contributed to this special edition of Bloomberg Business Week. If people aren't as squeezed as close together in the office, then there's a little bit less risk. I mean, it's not like I'm doing some heroic thing, but it does reduce everybody's risk a tiny bit. Read more about this and other stories in this coronavirus edition of Bloomberg Business Week on newsstands now and online at businessweek.com. Terminal customers can get a complimentary subscription at MAG Go and listen to Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly right here on Bloomberg Radio or watch it on YouTube weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. Wall Street time. 
Get global business, finance, and tech news on your TV, computer, or mobile device at YouTube.com. Just search Bloomberg Global News. 538 on Wall Street. It's time for the Tri-State Business Report with Bloomberg's Ed Corey. Good morning, Ed. Morning, Nathan. New Jersey Transit is seeking one and a quarter billion dollars of federal aid to make up for a plunge in fare revenue in the wake of the new coronavirus. According to a letter sent by the agency to the state's congressional delegation, ridership has dropped 88 percent since March 9th. Rents in February again reached all time highs across New York City, according to the Street Easy Market Report. Brooklyn saw the biggest year over year increase of all the boroughs, up five and a half percent. Brooklyn's rent growth was led by North Brooklyn. Home to neighborhoods including Williamsburg and Greenpoint, where rents rose 6.7%. Amazon.com is bidding on four stores owned by bankrupt grocer Fairway Group. Sources tell the Post they're located in New York and New Jersey, including one in Brooklyn. That's your Bloomberg Tri-State Business Report. I'm Ed Corey. Nathan? All right, Ed, thank you. 539 on Wall Street. Bloomberg Radio is on the air from San Francisco to New York, London to Hong Kong. Let's check in with our global news team for some of the top stories heard on our 300 affiliate radio stations around the world. This is Joan Doniger telling KTRH listeners in Houston about oil's wild ride higher. I'm Gina Cervetti, and on WBBM in Chicago, I'm reporting that Walmart is slated to begin its coronavirus testing in the Chicago area in conjunction with Walgreens and health officials. I'm Steve Podesk, and on 1010 Winds in New York, we're talking about Blue Apron confirming suspicions it has seen a sharp rise in meal kit demand in recent weeks. I'm Ed Corey on WWJ in Detroit. I'm reporting Vol. Volvo has started to close plans in the U.S. and Europe. And those are some of the stories our 2,700 Bloomberg journalists and analysts are working on this morning around the world. And some other stories we're following. Hertz Global Holdings, Avis Budget, and Enterprise are asking the Treasury Department to include their industry in plans to rescue travel companies. The car rental firms also want temporary relief from the rent and the minimum revenue sharing they pay to airports. Nikki Haley, President Trump's former ambassador to the United Nations, is leaving Boeing's board after less than a year. Haley opposes the plane maker's decision to seek a bailout and is exiting just as Boeing begins a contentious fight on Capitol Hill over its push for $60 billion in aid. S&P futures higher by 90 points. Dow futures up 815. NASDAQ futures higher by 355 points. This is Bloomberg. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore or emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to the city in the water? Well, you're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. This is your Bloomberg Real Estate Report. I'm Denise Pellegrini. One well-known real estate investor says the impact of the coronavirus is terrible, but... 
Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, here distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Conversation. Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest editions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. Kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and finish what I started to get my diploma. She just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you are thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Something remarkable happens when just the right elements come together. Ideas with technology. Data with inspiration. Investors with solutions. This is what Invesco does every day. Because they believe the possibilities of life and investing are greater when we come together. Invesco. Let's invest in greater possibilities together. To learn more, visit Invesco.com slash together. Invesco Distributors Incorporated. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in over 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a Global News Update. Special report, coronavirus update. And there's a recognition of our interdependence that requires of this moment that we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. California Governor Gavin Newsom has issued stay-at-home orders for 40 million people to curb the spread of coronavirus. In a letter to President Trump, Newsom said the virus eventually could infect more than half the state's population. New York City's mayor, Bill de Blasio, is asking... Where is the federal government? Where is the military? Why won't the president give the order to mobilize our military to guarantee that these products are being produced through the Defense Production Act? Members of President Trump's economic team will convene on Capitol Hill to launch negotiations with Congress as they continue drafting a $1 trillion-plus economic rescue package. I'm John Trout. They don't just talk to the most important people. Is it as ominous this time around? They talk with the most interesting people. Are they taking this seriously? Bloomberg Markets, weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Stocks and bonds are climbing globally alongside U.S. stock index futures while the dollar halts an eight-day rally as investors review the unprecedented measures to shield jobs and economies from the coronavirus. Oil is extending a rebound. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures, they're up 97 points. Dow futures up 843. NASDAQ futures up 355. The DAX in Germany is up 5.4%. CAC in Paris up 6.1%. FTSE 100 up 3.1 percent. Ten-year Treasury up one. The yield 1.03 percent. The yield on the two-year 0.41 percent. NYMEX crude oil up 7.7 percent of a dollar 95 to 27.17 a barrel. COMEX gold is up 2.1 percent of 31 dollars 50 cents at 15.1090 an ounce. The euro 1.0730 against the dollar. British pound 1.1757. 
And the yen is at 110.1 and 9. The VIX is at 64.62. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Karen, California imposed a statewide coronavirus stay-in-place order, though people can buy groceries and medicine. The governor estimated 56% of the state's population will get infected. Meanwhile, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city will run out of medical supplies in two to three weeks. Four senators sold stock after receiving briefings in late January about the virus. According to financial records, intelligence panel chairman Richard Burr sold between $628,000 and $1.72 million on February 13th in 33 transactions. Two other panel members, Diane Feinstein and James Inhofe, also sold stock after the briefings. Kelly Leffler began dumping 27 stocks on January 24th, the day the health committee she sits on held a meeting. New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton told ESPN that he learned yesterday he has tested positive for the coronavirus. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Okay, Michael. Thank you. It's 549 on Wall Street, and you are listening to Bloomberg Daybreak, live from the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studios. Let's get ready for this Friday morning. Kriti Gupta is back with us, markets reporter on our Bloomberg Markets live team. Creedy, once again, we are uh, seeing some wild swings in this market. The uh, European stocks are poised for their biggest gain in years. Futures on Wall Street, uh, at least the NASDAQ futures, hit limit up overnight. Is this just more of the same volatility, or could we have hit bottom here? Uh, well, I think it's going to be a, a little early to call the bottom here. I think what's important to keep in mind is, yes, I'm looking at S&P futures right now, 3.9% higher on the day. Like you said, NASDAQ futures are hitting limit up. Uh, what's crucial to note, though, is last night we uh, ended the day in the green by just 0.5%. That's on the S&P index. So just be careful there because that seems like, oh, well, everything's back to normal. Volatility is back down, but not quite. Uh, we're not quite there yet because uh, it's only been one day. We need a sustained kind of calm in the market's uh, to really uh, say that, okay, well, the bottom's in, things are returning back to normal. Something else I really want to point out super quickly is that today's quadruple witching day. So you're mm-hmm. actually going to be yeah. seeing um, extreme volume today, in addition to the already extreme volume uh, that we've been seeing uh, for the past uh, few weeks. Now, keep in mind that the volume over the past four weeks, uh, since the kind of virus took over all headlines, uh, you saw that that volume was higher than any quadruple witching day. So that coinciding with a quadruple witching day, I'm saying quadruple witching quite a lot, but it's important uh, means that today we could actually mean uh, some very uh, important and very uh, volatile, very hectic trading day. Uh, and that could also be why you're seeing futures open. I mean, the most liquid times will be right at the open and right at the close. Yeah, so today might not be the day to call bottom, at least at this point. But what indicators going forward are you going to be looking at to see whether this rally is sustainable? Sure. Uh, volatility is still still key and liquidity is still key. Until we start hearing uh, just kind of from people trading um, who were really kind of uh, changing uh, money from hands, for, excuse me, uh, well, they're the ones who are really saying that, you know, the market makers aren't able to really have much control here on the price action. It's just more uh, selling and, you know, they have their hands tied. So what you really want to hear right now is, okay, well, liquidity is still in there. We can go into the market and we can buy kind of the value trades. We can go in as a long-term investor. We don't have to worry about those short-term moves. Uh, a big kind of easy, easy index to watch is, is the VIX index. We just need volatility to really come back down. I believe we had 83 recently uh, yeah. on the VIX. Uh, that is way too high. Even a tw- in the 20s is way too high. You need that to really come down. And in terms of liquidity back in the market, we're finally starting to see a pullback in the dollar. Is that something that can be a s- supportive of equities longer term, or is that a sign that uh, investors might be concerned about the uh, risk of a long-term recession going forward? Well, the dollar is an interesting story right now because we actually saw the dollar kind of function as a haven trade. And, and like it, we talked about this yesterday, Nathan, but the haven trade is kind of switching between asset class to asset class. It, it started in kind of the defensives and stocks, then we'll switch to treasuries, of course, then gold, and now the dollar because people are really hoarding dollars now to when somehow hop into the treasury market when they need to. A, a big part of that, though, uh, and this is the reason uh, you might be seeing a pullback in, in the Bloomberg dollar index is because of uh, 
look what the Fed announced yesterday. They're announcing dollar swap lines with other central banks as well. So you're not seeing this kind of hoarding of dollars need anymore uh, that we saw in the past few days. Uh, and that could actually just mean more of a short-term kind of security for the dollar market and dollar funding uh, as opposed to a, a bottom in, in, in the stock market. Uh, in our last minute here, Creedy, I know you've been watching the oil market in terms of recessionary indicator. We're starting to see more of a surge in crude price this morning. At the same time, Russian President Vladimir Putin is making it sound like he's not willing to blink when it comes to the price war with Saudi Arabia. That's right. It doesn't look like we're uh, kind of thawing anything on that front. But I will, it's something to note, though, and something that actually could be moving the prices up is the fact that uh, Texas actually came out yesterday and said that they're willing to cut their production by 10%. And what really is important to note here, not just the production numbers, because that's still on the table, but we were waiting for that kind of policy response from the president uh, when it comes to oil markets. And we didn't really see that. This changes the game uh, with Texas coming out and saying that because it means that OPEC is no longer solely in control. This isn't no or is this is no longer, excuse me, a story between Saudi Arabia and Russia alone and all the other Middle Eastern producers. We're actually bringing the United States into the fold, and that could actually be a very positive, uh, not just for the oil market in the short term, but just kind of stability in the long term. Yeah, Creedy Gupta, always good talking with you. Thanks for the update. Uh, you can get more from Creedy and the rest of our Bloomberg Markets Live team. Just type MLIV Go on the Bloomberg terminal. Karen. All right. Thank you, Nathan. It is 554 on Wall Street. It's time for the Bloomberg Law Report. Let's get to the legal stories we're watching this morning from Bloomberg's Jeff Bellinger. Discussions are underway between the Federal Communications Commission and Congress over funding to support remote learning and telehealth services through the coronavirus crisis. Rideshare drivers are calling on Uber, Lyft, and operators of similar services to create an assistance fund to help drivers whose income to dried up. And the Ninth Circuit ruled that Zoomies and other California retailers that require workers to call in and be available on short notice must be paid, even if the workers don't have to report. Bloomberg Law. Everything you need, all on one legal research platform, including guidance, analysis, and Bloomberg Market Intelligence. Find out more at BloombergLaw.com. And now another legal development we're watching includes the Justice Department postponing all immigration court hearings for immigrants not being held in detention. The DOJ has so far closed 69 court locations across the country, including in Los Angeles and Houston. For more on the move, Bloomberg's June Grasso speaks with immigration law expert Leon Fresco, a partner at Holland and Knight. Leon, these closures come after repeated calls from immigration judges. Was there panic at the immigration courts? Well, yes, Jude. The problem is at all of these locations, whether it's an immigration court or whether it's an ICE detention facility or whether it's at a USCIS appointment location, a field office, you have hundreds of people packed into a room like a sardine, uh, both going through security, there's a long security line, going in crammed elevators, waiting in crammed hearing rooms and courtrooms. And so if you were going to say, well, what is the equivalent of a cruise ship in the United States, you would be talking about any of these offices. What happens to the immigrants who are in custody, in detention right now? Well, this is a very important question, and I actually have a case of my own that's in this regard, where I'm basically making the argument in a habeas petition that you have people who you know you can't deport because no countries are letting people in, and so if you can't deport someone, the entire purpose of immigration custody is to retain some individual inside your custody so that you can then execute the deportation order, but if you can't execute the deportation order, it becomes rather cruel to keep them in a detention facility where they're much more likely, again, just like in a cruise ship scenario, to contract the coronavirus and for no reason, because you know you're not going to be able to execute the removal order. And so for that reason, I think you're going to see a lot more of these habeas petitions filed unless ICE takes the affirmative action of releasing everybody from its detention facilities that are not sort of the most hardened of hardened criminals. And that's Leon Fresco, our partner at Holland and Knight. Speaking with the Bloomberg student Grasso, catch more of that interview plus analysis of the latest legal news by subscribing to the Bloomberg Law Podcast or downloading the show at Bloomberg.com slash podcast. And attorneys can find exceptional legal research and business development tools at BloombergLaw.com. 
Again, futures on the rise this morning. S&P futures up 105, Dow futures up 901, and NASDAQ futures up 355. 10-year Treasury up 28 30 seconds, yield 1.04%. And Bloomberg Daybreak continues. This is Bloomberg. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, I'll talk with the author of a fictional story about a global pandemic that right now feels all too real. All I did was just drew upon the trends. You know, I just extended them. Unfortunately, real life seems to have outraced even some of my imagination. Lawrence Wright joins me on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. You know, cash infusion to individuals that may come in the form of two cash payments later this month or early next month. Small businesses to give them a bridge loan to be able to make sure that they don't dislocate workers at a time like this, which is incredibly important for our economy. 70% of small businesses employ almost the entirety of our workforce. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Friday, March 20th, 2020. Coming up this hour. The global death toll from COVID-19 tops 10,000. As the virus spreads, communities across the country clamp down on activity. In Europe, fatalities climb in Italy, where deaths now surpass those in China. Financial markets take it all in stride as stocks gain around the world. California's governor issues a statewide order for home isolation to avoid COVID-19. Plus, four people from a New Jersey family have died from the virus. I'm Michael Barr. More ahead. I'm John Stash. Here in sports, Saints coach Sean Payton and Marcus Smart of the Celtics have both tested positive for coronavirus. The Giants signed veteran quarterback Colt McCoy. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak. On Bloomberg 1130 New York. Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 1061 Boston. Bloomberg 960 San Francisco. Sirius XM 119. And around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business Act. Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by Witham, a forward-thinking, technology-driven advisory and accounting firm helping clients be in a position of strength in today's modern business landscape. Visit Witham.com to learn more. And U.S. futures and global stocks are gaining this morning. It is 6.01 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures up 101 points. Dow futures up 894. NASDAQ futures up 355. The DAX in Germany up 5.6%. The CAC in Paris up 6%. FTSE 100 up 3 and a third percent. Ten-year Treasury up 28.30 seconds. The yield 1.04%, and the yield on the two-year 0.41%. NYMEX crude oil is up 10.5% at $27.89 a barrel. Nathan. All right, Karen, thank you. As the coronavirus outbreak spreads, communities across the country are clamping down on activity. We have Bloomberg team coverage on the fallout now, beginning in New York with Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Cases of the virus in New York City are nearing 4,000, 26 deaths so far. Governor Andrew Cuomo is fending off calls for a shelter-in-place order, but says he will not shut down the city. Let's just take a deep breath and make sure we're acting on facts as opposed to acting on fear. Cuomo's ordering businesses to keep 75% of workers at home. In New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy expects cases to reach into the many thousands. He's ordered personal care businesses to close, including barbershops, hair and nail salons, and tattoo parlors. I'm Michael Barr in New York. Now here's Joan Doniger in our Bloomberg 1061 Boston Newsroom. Governor Charlie Baker is activating the Massachusetts National Guard as confirmed cases in the 
state top 300. He's also promising a big increase in testing for the virus. Over the course of the next several days and weeks, there will be an enormous increase in the amount of testing that takes place on a daily basis. The first high-capacity drive through testing facility in Massachusetts is now open at a CVS parking lot in Shrewsbury. I'm Joan Doniger. Now, here's Martin DeCaro from our Bloomberg 991 newsroom in Washington. 73 D.C. firefighters, paramedics, and emergency medical technicians are reportedly self-quarantined after potential exposure to the virus. Metro Transit Police closed two rail stations last night to discourage crowds from heading to the Tidal Basin to view the cherry blossoms. The district reported 32 new patients, nearly doubling the prior total. Cases now number 72. I'm Martin DeCaro in Washington. Now here's Amy Morris in Germantown, Maryland. Governor Larry Hogan signed emergency legislation opening previously closed medical facilities across the state, and he's banning social gatherings of more than 50 people. I have just enacted an executive order to shut down all bars, restaurants, movie theaters, and gyms across the state. The governor's emergency measure also offers job protections for workers affected by the outbreak, as both Maryland and D.C. have reported a spike in unemployment claims. Maryland added 22 cases yesterday. That brings the state's total infections to 108. I'm Amy Morris in Germantown, Maryland. Now here's Ed Baxter in California, where Governor Gavin Newsom is issuing a statewide shelter-in-place order. Newsom says about 56%, about 25.5 million people will become infected. He says he's written to the president asking for help. Moreover, he says we have community-acquired transmission in 23 counties with an increase of 44 community-acquired infections in 24 hours. He says in some parts of the state, the case rate is doubling every four days. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg daybreak. All right, Ed, thank you. Meantime, in Europe, Italy remains the epicenter of the outbreak. Deaths there now number more than in China as the country remains in lockdown. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Alessandro Speciale in Rome. The government is thinking of imposing even harsher restrictions, for example, just going out once per day for food shopping and all that, but it's not clear whether this will be enough to slow down the growth of the virus in some regions. The situation is particularly worrying in the north. There are reports of hospitals really at capacity, not enough intensive care units for all the people coming in with the virus. One thing that is not clear is why the death rate in Italy has been so high compared to China. Infections in Italy have now eclipsed 40,000. Deaths number more than 3,400. In the meantime, in the UK, cases of COVID-19 have jumped 25% in one day. For the very latest, we're joined live by Bloomberg's Ewan Potts in London. Good morning, Ewan. Good morning, Nathan and Karen. As confirmed cases of coronavirus top 3,200, the UK's Prime Minister has warned he may need to tighten restrictions in the capital. Like the rest of the country, Londoners have been asked to limit social contact and work from home. Sources tell us the government is now considering ordering bars, restaurants and shops to close. The country's health secretary says the UK is still only at the beginning of the virus outbreak. Live in London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ewan, thank you. And in China, ground zero for the outbreak. We're seeing more signs the outbreak is slowing. Officials say today's 39 new cases all came from outside of the country. Here with the details is Bloomberg's Brian Curtis in Hong Kong. Second day in a row with no domestic infections. China is now imposing tighter restrictions on inbound travelers. In the meantime, Beijing exonerated the heroic doctor who was reprimanded for warning about the outbreak. Dr. Li Wenliang later died of the disease. The party rebuked the Wuhan police force and punished two officers. Elsewhere, Premier Li Keqiang says most of China is now considered low risk and people are now returning to normal work and life. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you, Brian. Worldwide deaths from the virus have surpassed 10,000. That's according to data from Johns Hopkins University. The World Health Organization says the disease is now infecting people at a faster rate. Cases in the U.S. currently number more than 12,000 with 220 deaths. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. And at 6.07 on Wall Street, it's time to check the latest world and national news. Here's Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Thank you very much, Nathan. A freehold New Jersey family has been hit hard by the coronavirus. A fourth member of the Fusco family has died from COVID-19 within a week. Elizabeth Fusco, who lost her mother and three siblings, is beyond grief and says words cannot describe the pain and horror of what happened to her family. It's like the second we 
start to grieve about one, the phone rings and there is another person gone, taken from us forever. Two other relatives are in critical condition. And while the nation is trying to cope with the coronavirus, some scam artists are trying to make a fast buck. New York Attorney General Letitia James warned residents of people purportedly knocking on doors claiming to be from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and offering tests for the coronavirus, for a fee, of course. James says New Yorkers should know that no one from the CDC or any other health agency is knocking on doors to provide tests for the COVID-19 virus. It's one of the most sweeping moves of any state yet to curb the spread of the virus. California's governor has issued stay-at-home orders for the entire state, 40 million people. Governor Gavin Newsom says that unless the rise in cases of COVID-19 slows, it might overwhelm the state's medical system. As a nation state, 40 million strong, uh, we've been organized around an attack rate, as we refer to it, of about 56 percent, that the virus uh, will impact about 56 percent of us. You do the math in the state of California, that's a particularly large number. Newsom says people will be able to shop for food and seek medical care. One of the most precious items needed during this outbreak, ventilators. However, Vice President Mike Pence, who heads up the White House Coronavirus Task Force, says more ventilators will be on the way. We're encouraged to learn that we've literally identified tens of thousands of ventilators that can be converted to treat patients. And we remain increasingly confident that we will have the ventilators that we need as the coronavirus makes its way across America. President Trump has canceled the G7 meeting at Camp David scheduled for June because of the coronavirus. In a White House statement, the president plans to hold the meeting via video conference with G7 leaders instead. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan? Okay, Michael, thank you. We're coming up to 610 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashow. Nathan, the coronavirus continues to affect the sports world. More positive tests. Longtime Saints coach Sean Payton, Celtics starting guard Marcus Smart and two members of the Lakers who have not been identified. Peyton was seen at a horse racing track in Arkansas last weekend surrounded by people, said he did not show respiratory symptoms. Smart said he feels fine. The Celtics played Utah March 6th. The Jazz, of course, have two players with it. And after it was learned the Nets have four, that's when the Lakers got tested. Their last game before the hiatus was against Brooklyn. As those in sports get quick tests and results, the controversy continues as to how and why when others have such trouble. And, of course, more positive tests may the games returning anytime soon seem more unlikely. NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman in an interview on ESPN said they can go later if need be. He's not sure how late. In other words, they can extend the season, which normally ends in early June. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver told ESPN that he doesn't have a clue as to what a return date will be. He said it will only come with the okay from public health officials. NFL News. The Rams released two veterans. Running back Todd Gurley, linebacker Clay Matthews, veteran QB Joe Flacco, one year in Denver, now released. The Lions traded one of their top players, cornerback Darius Slay, to the Eagles and the Giants have their backup to starting QB Daniel Jones. It's Colt McCoy, who had been with Washington. For the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stanfield. Nathan? All right, thank you, John. And join us tonight for the Bloomberg Business of Sports show. Will there be a Tokyo Olympics this summer? Has the coronavirus changed the way we'll watch sports forever? We'll look to answer those questions with Rick Burton, Syracuse University Professor of Sports Management. That's tonight at 7 and tomorrow at 11 a.m. on Bloomberg Radio. Or subscribe to the Bloomberg Business of Sports show wherever you get your podcasts. S&P futures are higher now by 104 points. Dow futures up 950. NASDAQ futures a gain of 355 points. Tenure up 31 30 seconds yield 1.03%. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. 
That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. This week's On the Media, the president thought he could defeat the narrative of COVID-19 with his usual tactic of, quote, censorship through noise. But the virus is proving resistant. People's lives are going to be disrupted on a daily basis. And as that happens, the alternate reality he's created is inevitably going to implode. Catch On the Media from WNYC. Listen to the On the Media podcast from WNYC Studios on TuneIn today. Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest additions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. Bloomberg Television. Here's Emily Chang. Continuing our look now at the fallout from the coronavirus outbreak, I'm joined now by Dick Costello, the former CEO of Twitter, also managing partner of the new venture capital firm, O1 Advisors. Dick, thank you so much for joining us. I got to get your thoughts, first of all, on the big picture here. Markets are melting down. There is no end in sight. What's your view on all of this and what it means for the tech economy? My personal take on this is that in the past, in, in 2001 and in 2008, 2009, those were both um, great buying opportunities. I mean, you never know where the bottom is going to be, and you never know when it's going to end. But um, a couple of years from now, we'll look back and wish um, we've been buying more when uh, prices were where they are. So I've, I've been a buyer um, slowly but surely all along the last week and probably will continue to do that. You and your former colleague uh, Adam Bain from Twitter recently launched a venture capital firm, O1 Advisors. What's the status of that? And, you know, are you trying to raise funding? Are you able to raise funding? Yeah, we've, we, the funds raised, um, you know, fortunately, uh, that, and that's great. Uh, we're continuing to put money to work and continuing to invest. Um, uh, and I'm not obviously advising operators um, and CEOs in this environment to, you know, um, you don't know how long it's going to last. Um, take it very, very seriously. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow, and this update's brought to you by IBKR, the professional's gateway to the world's markets. Their clients enjoy lowest-cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, and fixed income from a single integrated account. Learn more at IBKR.com. Stocks and bonds climbing globally alongside U.S. stock index futures while the dollar halts an eight-day rally as investors review the unprecedented measures to shield jobs and economies from the coronavirus. Oil is extending a rebound, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day. 
today on Bloomberg. S&P futures up 95 points this morning. Dow futures up 847. NASDAQ futures up 355. The DAX in Germany is up 5.7%. CAC in Paris up 5.8%. FTSE 100 up 3.1%. Ten-year Treasury up 1 in 5, 30 seconds. Yield 1.01%. The yield on the two-year, 0.41%. 30-year yield, 1.58%. NYMEX crude oil is up 7.7% of $1.95 95 to 2717 a barrel. Comex gold up 2.1% of $30.70 at 1509.90 an ounce. The euro 1.0731 against the dollar. British pound 1.1768 and the yen is at 110.15. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Karen, it is the most sweeping move of any state yet to curb the spread of the coronavirus. California's governor has issued stay-at-home orders for 40 million people. Governor Gavin Newsom says the virus eventually could infect more than half the state's population. Members of President Donald Trump's economic team will convene on Capitol Hill to launch negotiations with Senate Republicans and Democrats, racing the draft a $1 trillion-plus economic rescue package amid the coronavirus outbreak. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has unveiled a sweeping economic rescue plan to pump $1,200 checks directly to taxpayers. New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton told ESPN that he learned yesterday that he tested positive for the coronavirus. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. We're coming up to 620 on Wall Street. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. Let's welcome in our next guest now. Francis Donald is head of macroeconomic strategy at Manulife Asset Management. Good to talk with you this morning, Francis. And it seems as though the question is less about whether we're in a recession now, but how long it will last and what recovery looks like, particularly after this move in California to essentially lock down the entire state. What's your view on where things go from here? Well, we are headed towards one of the steepest contractions, if not the steepest contraction in modern economic history here. Q2 growth could look like something double-digit declines. This is unprecedented, and the speed at which we're going to see economic destruction is is really quite fascinating. The hope, the optimistic scenario is that we're ripping the Band-Aid off, and by the third quarter of this year, we can see some improvements again. I'm a little concerned that we'll see improvements in some areas, particularly manufacturing and the supply chain component of this story, but services are probably going to take a little bit longer to get back online. So when we talk about this V-shaped recovery, we probably need to be specific about which industries. And ultimately, what we're experiencing here is going to be a, a fairly large behavioral shift in the way that companies and people operate. And that's not going to disappear by the third quarter of this year. That's probably going to persist for years, if not longer. Are you implying then that the measures that we're hearing from Washington about uh, sector by sector bailouts might not be enough for certain sectors? Oh, we, we will certainly see support, just like we're seeing support globally. But it, it, these fiscal measures and our monetary measures are not going to prevent a recession. At this point, the forced closures, the deliberate slowing of our economy, short-term pain for, let's hope, long-term gain, is in place. These measures are going to cushion the blow. They will not prevent it. Um, most of what we're seeing on the fiscal side is going to be about the recovery, not about how uh, you know painful the next three months are, particularly for a lot of our high-frequency economic data. My hope is that fiscal measures can l- lower the amount of layoffs that we see and bridge the gap between now and the other side, whenever that is. But it doesn't seem like there's been much in place yet that will significantly lower the amount of, for example, rise in jobless claims we're going to see. Are there any further measures you're looking for from central banks? And what do you make of the emergency moves that have been announced so far? So central banks are doing a fairly good job of proactively noticing the problem for them is not the coronavirus specifically, but the issues that we're seeing in the credit market. Unfortunately, even though we've seen, you know, what they call the alphabet soup of measures, all sorts of different mechanisms, we still still have some problems underlying this uh, market. We have real rates that are rising. 
mortgage rates that are rising. Municipal ponds look very problematic. Vol in the fixed income market is still problematic. So there's more to be done here. Um, my sense is that we will see yield curve control to try to pin the front end, but we also need to be having some serious discussions about the idea that the Fed may end up straight up buying corporate bonds or uh, ETFs attached to corporate bonds. And that would have been sort of right out of left field, almost ludicrous for a lot of us even two months ago. But given the weakness that we're seeing in this market, for the Fed, this is no longer about the virus. It's about the potential for a credit crisis, and they need to stay on top of it. Only about 45 seconds left here, Francis. What indicators are you going to be looking for in terms of whether we do see a sustained recovery in the third quarter? So the indicators that I'm watching now are actually indicators I've never watched before. They're things like how many people are taking the subway, um, individual surveys from private companies that tell us how many hours were reduced every day. We're looking at Google searches for unemployment insurance. These are unprecedented times, and they call for unprecedented data points. We can't use the old tools in this type of environment. Uh, we have to be looking towards new ways to think about this economy. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good speaking with you. Frances Donald, uh, she's the head of macroeconomic strategy at Manulife Asset Management. And uh, taking a look at markets right now, we is continue to see the rally for equities on this Friday morning quadruple witching day. Uh, for equity markets. S&P futures higher by 89 points right now. Dow futures a gain of 796. NASDAQ futures hit limit up overnight. They're higher by 355 points. DAX in Germany a gain of 5.5%. CAC in Paris up 5 and 3 quarters percent. 10 years up 1 and 8 30 seconds. The yield 1.00%. Two-year treasury yield is at 0.41%. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak on this Friday morning. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stock futures point to more gains. Globally, markets are rising as investors review the unprecedented measures to shield jobs and economies from the coronavirus. And there was a higher close on Wall Street yesterday. The benchmark S&P 500 gained one half of 1%. Crude oil continues to climb as well. It's up about 10% today, almost back to $28 a barrel after rising 24% in its last session. Walmart is hiring 150,000 temporary workers to meet surge demand for everyday goods. The new employees will mainly work in distribution centers, and many will become permanent staff over time. The retailer also said that all of its U.S. hourly employees will get bonuses on April 2nd, $300 for full-timers and $150 for part-time employees. S&P futures up 106, NASDAQ futures up 355 points, Dow futures up 910. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the space repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence with Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be... Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up. Because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always BYOB. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, I'll talk with the author of a fictional story about a global pandemic that right now feels all too real. All I did was just drew upon the trends. You know, I just extended them. 
Unfortunately, real life seems to have outraced even some of my imagination. Lawrence Wright joins me on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. 25 years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain, a company whose incredible innovations changed the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering the innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. The attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision-makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. If morning is not your favorite part of the day, then maybe you're not listening. What would you expect from Bezos next? Bloomberg Surveillance. We finally start to make a move. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And it's 630 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moss. Yeah, we are just about three hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. Global stocks are climbing as the dollar weakens sharply. That ends an eight-day rally for the greenback and leaves investors wondering if we've finally reached a bottom. Nancy Tangler is chief investment officer at Leffer Tangler. We're seeing good companies behave better than the overall market. In the beginning of the downturn, everything sold off. And now our stocks are starting to outperform. And that's usually a sign that we're at least getting close to a bottom. And right now, S&P futures are up 3.3%. In Europe, the stock 600 is up 3.7%. And bond yields are falling with a yield on 10-year treasuries at 0.99%. That's as the Senate prepares another round of stimulus. The latest plan includes $1,200 tax rebates for individuals making less than $100,000 a year. As the coronavirus spreads, President Trump is being asked if the measure is enough. If we can stop it in its tracks, the virus, uh, it's plenty. If we can't, we'll have to go back and talk. Do you you support the idea of the government taking an equity stake in certain companies? I do. I really do. Well, President Trump says the government could take stakes in firms that get bailouts, but right now the plan under consideration provides $208 billion of loans for companies suffering from the pandemic, including $58 billion for the airline sector. 
Worldwide, deaths from the virus have now surpassed 10,000. That according to data from Johns Hopkins University, the World Health Organization says the disease is infecting people at a faster rate than before. Cases in the U.S. currently number more than 12,000 with 220 deaths. In Europe, Italy remains the epicenter of the outbreak. Deaths there now number more than in China as the country remains in lockdown. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Alessandro Speciale in Rome. The situation is particularly worrying in the north. There are reports of hospitals really at capacity, not enough intensive care units for all the people coming in with the virus. One thing that is not clear is why the death rate in Italy has been so high compared to China. Right now, infections in Italy have eclipsed 40,000 deaths, number more than 3,400. And futures this morning are higher. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. Right now, S&P futures are up about 80 points. Dow futures up 730. And NASDAQ futures up 344. The DAX in Germany is up 5.1%. Ten-year Treasury up 1 in 12.30 seconds. Again, the yield 0.99%. Yield on the two-year 0.40%. 30-year yield 1.57%. NYMEX crude oil is up 7.7%. Up $1.95 at 27.7% a barrel and bloomberg daybreak continues we have the latest world and national news straight ahead this is bloomberg all right thanks karen it's 6 33 on wall street and this news update is brought to you by land rover the own the adventure sales event is happening now until march 31st visit your tri-state area land rover retailer for details on the new discovery sport land rover above and beyond now here's michael barr Thank you very much, Nathan. The coronavirus has taken a heavy toll on a New Jersey family. A fourth member of the Fusco family has died within a week. Elizabeth Fusco lost her mother and three siblings. She says her world began to crash down on her Tuesday morning. I woke up Tuesday morning, the baby of 11. My mom called me and said, Lizzie, I don't feel good. Rita don't feel good. Tony don't feel good. Can you come? Can you come help us? In New Jersey, there are close to 320 COVID-19 cases. The tens of thousands of transit workers who help get New Yorkers around are calling for greater protection with at least 23 MTA workers testing positive for COVID-19 so far. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the MTA will continue running, but this train worker is suggesting that Cuomo is playing Russian roulette with their lives. The risk is if he runs these trains without any members of the train crews being checked for the coronavirus, he's going to have no service. In New York City, cases of coronavirus have hit 4,000 with 26 deaths. The Metropolitan Opera is canceling the rest of its season and stopping the pay of the orchestra because of the virus. California Governor Gavin Newsom ordered that all of the state's 40 million residents go into home isolation starting last evening, marking the most stringent U.S. effort yet to stymie the spread of the novel coronavirus. During a news conference, Newsom said this is a moment where we need some straight talk. This is not a permanent state. This is a moment in time. And we will meet this moment together. And we will look back at these kinds of decisions as pivotal decisions. A $1 trillion plus bill has been introduced in the Senate to get Americans direct aid. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. The plan is for bipartisan talks today. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says no middleman. Direct financial help for Americans. Senate Republicans want to put cash in the hands of the American people. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer welcomes that, but says the bill also needs to include aid for hospitals. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. Global news, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. It's just before 6.36 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. Nathan listed NBA players. Players who have tested positive for coronavirus continues to grow. Started with Rudy Gobert, then his Utah teammate Donovan Mitchell, Christian Wood of the Pistons, Kevin Durant, and three Brooklyn teammates. And now add Marcus Smart of the Celtics. What's up, everyone? So I just found out I tested positive for the coronavirus. I'm okay. I feel fine. Um, I don't feel any of the symptoms. Um, but I can't stress enough practicing social distancing and really, you know, keeping yourself away from a large group of people. 
um, and just really washing your hands and, and, and help protect yourself and help protect others by protecting yourself. Thank you. And two Lakers have tested positive. Their identity is not known. So is longtime Saints coach Sean Payton. That's the first from the NFL, whose teams have been signing free agents and they want language put in the contracts protecting them if the player gets a positive test. The physicals, in many cases, are not going to take place for months due to the virus. Tom Brady's contract with Tampa Bay won't be signed until his physical. He's said to be trying to set one up in New York. Cam Newton expected to be released soon by Carolina. Hardly played last season due to an injured shoulder. Will teams want him if they can't have a doctor first take a look at him? The Giants have what appears to be an ideal backup to starting quarterback Daniel Jones. Colt McCoy, nine-year veteran, the last five in Washington. The Giants also signed Nate Ebner, eight years with the Patriots, playing special teams. New Giants coach Joe Judge coached in New England. Todd Gurley wants a star running back with the Rams. They released him. Joe Flacco wants a Super Bowl winning QB in Baltimore. One year in Denver, he's been released. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stash. Nathan? All right, John, thanks. It's 637 on Wall Street. The following commentary is from Bloomberg Opinion. A coronavirus treatment worth watching. I'm Max Neeson, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. As the coronavirus crisis unfolded, we've seen a flood of announcements touting potential treatments. Many come from biotechs that haven't successfully developed a drug. Regeneron, on the other hand, has invented blockbuster medicines, has demonstrated ability to respond to outbreaks, and announced Tuesday that it's ahead of schedule on a new COVID drug. It may be ready for human trials in early summer. There's still a long road ahead, but the news is cause for measured optimism. Using proprietary mice with human-like immune systems, Regeneron developed an antibody cocktail that proved highly effective in preventing Ebola deaths during a recent epidemic in the Congo. Still, there's no guarantee of success in coronavirus, and progress considered rapid by drug development standards could feel slow as the outbreak grows. In the best-case scenario where Regeneron hits ambitious timelines, the drug works, and regulators are supportive, it could conceivably see limited use sometime in the fall. The more likely scenario is that it takes longer. That may not seem like much of a win as cases mount, but keep in mind that a vaccine won't be available for at least a year. The most promising interim options are repurposed. With many drug companies having moved away from infectious disease, this novel remedy may be essential. I'm Max Neeson. For more opinion, please go to Bloomberg.com slash opinion or OPIN Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. And you can hear Bloomberg Opinion commentaries every weekday at this time. Terminal customers can read more at OPIN Go. Just before 6.39 on Wall Street, time for the Bloomberg Small Business Report. Here's John Tucker. With coronavirus arresting economic activity, small businesses could bear the brunt of the fallout with limited cash flow to cover debt expenses. And that may cause loan losses for the smaller regional banks. Bloomberg Intelligence is tracking loan amounts of $100,000 to $1 million from regulatory filings to assess exposure to small business lending. It appears the regional bank's higher capital levels will allow them to sustain an extraordinary amount of loan losses while still maintaining capital ratios above the minimum requirements. But there may be exceptions. In this Bloomberg analysis, Zions Bancorp, based in Salt Lake City, may have the highest capital drawdown because of the greater exposure to small businesses and the energy sector. That's followed by Huntington Citizens and Comerica. The analysis also shows Fifth Third and Regions holding up the best. And that's the Bloomberg Small Business Report. All right, John, thanks. Some other stories we're following. Hertz Global Holdings, Avis Budget, and Enterprise want the Treasury Department to include uh, the car uh, rental industry in their plans to rescue travel companies. The firms also want temporary relief from the rent and minimum revenue sharing they pay to airports. Former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley is leaving Boeing's board after less than a year. She opposes the plane maker's decision to seek a bailout. Boeing does face a contentious fight on Capitol Hill over its push for $60 billion in aid. And Bloomberg News has learned AT&T is in talks with banks for a new term loan of roughly three billion dollars part of an effort to explore financing options and help the company navigate rising costs in the market for short-term iou's at&t wants to pay down the highest debt load of any non-financial company in the u.s futures pointed higher this is bloomberg Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. 
That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. This is a Bloomberg Pursuits look at luxury. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, I'll talk with the author of a fictional story about a global pandemic that right now feels all too real. All I did was just drew upon the trends. You know, I just extended them. Unfortunately, real life seems to have outraced even some of my imagination. Lawrence Wright joins me on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. Or your race, or because you have children, or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Witham offers private equity expertise to address the advisory, audit, and tax needs of your fund's portfolio companies. Hi, I'm Bill Hageman, Witham's proud CEO. Witham's private equity specialists understand the unique challenges facing PE firms. We work hand-in-hand with sponsors and their portfolio companies to help maximize the value of their investments with our world-class advisory, audit, and tax solutions, and industry expertise in key growth sectors, such as healthcare, manufacturing, and real estate. Visit Witham.com slash PE for more information. Connecting decision makers to a network of news and financial information 24 hours a day. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. Special report, coronavirus update. 40 million Californians under stay-at-home orders this morning as Governor Gavin Newsom says it's necessary to help keep the state's medical system from being overwhelmed. Newsom says people are allowed to shop for food and seek medical care but should practice social distancing. Unemployment is soaring, as Christine Romans tells us. This number, a whopper, Goldman Sachs predicts 2.25 million Americans filed initial unemployment claims this week. That would 
will be the most in history. Numbers in California already up 33 percent. After gains yesterday, Wall Street stock futures are up four and a half percent this morning. Members of President Trump's economic team will be on Capitol Hill today to hammer out details on the latest economic rescue package. The trillion dollar White House plan pumps money directly into taxpayers' hands and to businesses large and small suffering in the pandemic crisis. I'm Michael Toscano. They don't just talk to the most important people. Is it as ominous this time around? They talk with the most interesting people. Are they taking this seriously? Bloomberg Markets, weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Stocks and bonds climbing globally alongside U.S. stock index futures with a dollar halt and eight-day rally as investors review the unprecedented measures to shield jobs and economies from the coronavirus. Oil is extending a rebound. And we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg with contracts on the three main U.S. equity indexes all jumping with NASDAQ 100 futures hitting their limit up there at 323 points right now up 4.4 percent. S&P futures up 72 and NASDAQ. NASDAQ futures up 664. The DAX in Germany is up 4.9 percent. Ten-year Treasury up one in 15 30 seconds, yield 0.99 percent. The yield on the two-year 0.40 percent, and the 30-year yield 1.57 percent. Nymex crude oil up 7.7 percent, up a dollar 95 to 27.17 a barrel. Comex gold up two and a third percent, or 34 dollars 30 cents at 15.13.60 an ounce. The euro 1.0736 against the dollar. British pound 1.1788. And the yen is at 109.91. The VIX, 66.29. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Karen, California imposed a statewide coronavirus stay-in-place order, though people can buy groceries and medicine. The governor estimated 56% of the state's population will get infected. Meanwhile, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city will run out of medical supplies in two to three weeks. Four senators sold stock after receiving briefings in late January about the virus. According to Financial Records, Intelligence Panel Chairman Richard Burr sold between $628,000 and $1.72 million on February 13th in 33 transactions. Two other panel members, Diane Feinstein and James Inhofe, also sold stock after the briefings. Kelly Loeffler began dumping 27 stocks on January 24th. The day the health committee she sits on held a meeting. New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton told ESPN that he learned yesterday that he tested positive for the coronavirus. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael. Thank you. We are live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. We're at 649 on Wall Street. Time now to check what's going on in D.C. and the latest on the coronavirus response in the nation's capital. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin is urging Congress to move quickly on a $1.3 trillion stimulus measure that would include include cash payments to Americans. President Trump is touting an anti-malaria drug to treat COVID-19, even though the FDA hasn't approved it for that purpose. And the president has canceled a G7 summit at Camp David set for this June. Because of the coronavirus, he's going to hold a video conference instead. Also making news, as Michael mentioned, four U.S. senators who sold stock after receiving sensitive briefings about the threat of COVID-19. For more on all this, we're joined by Terry Haynes, founder of Pangea Policy Advisory. Good to talk with you as always, Terry. And, uh, of course, this uh, controversy about these four senators, particularly Senate Intelligence Chairman Richard Burr, is uh, creating quite a lot of consternation inside the beltway what do you make of these revelations that came at a time apparently when uh, president trump was still downplaying the threat when these briefings apparently happened back in january good morning nathan and uh, yeah the uh, those of you who remember lucille ball will will uh, appreciate that uh, there's at least four senators that are going to have some explaining to do yeah and uh the you know, there are lots of reasons why uh, why these things could have happened. Some of them nefarious, some of them not. And uh, they're going to have to talk about that. Uh, and I think that will unleash a lot of, uh, uh, as it already has, uh, a, a, a lot of emotion uh, at those folks. So I hope they 
they I hope their reasons, whatever they were, were legitimate and that they worked to tamp those things down quickly because uh, the last thing we need is uh, the additional lack of uh, faith in political institutions right now and the people that are helping to run them. Well, what do you make of some of the explanations we've seen so far? I know that uh, Senator Burr and uh, Senator Leffler, who we should mention is married to the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange, uh, came out on Twitter last night after these media reports. I think uh, Senator Burr called it a tabloid-style report. Are they going to de- need to do more than just that? <laughs> yeah, if were I advising any senator of either party on uh, on media response and substantive response, uh, I would advise them very strongly that what's gone on so far is highly inadequate and uh, and that they're going to actually have to come clean, uh, very simply. Well, what, what could these revelations mean in terms of the uh, the actual effort happening on Capitol Hill to work through this pandemic to provide some kind of economic relief for these uh, uh, industry sectors that are screaming for it? Does this uh, you know, potential political distraction undermine that effort in any way? I think that's a very smart question, uh, but I think the answer is no. Uh, uh, there are too many people uh, rightly focused on on the need to get something moving and uh, the, the large, uh, what's now being called the stimulus bill, the, the large stimulus bill and, and get that completed quickly and uh, with a good deal of bipartisan agreement uh, and the difficulties of a few policymakers, none of whom are, all of whose votes are, are important, but none of whom are front and center in this particular uh, uh, crisis response, uh, I don't think slows anything down. It's not going to be uh, it's not going to be anything that uh, it, it, that interposes itself between the discussions that are taking place now among the administration, Senator McConnell, uh, Senator Schumer, Speaker Pelosi, and others. Uh, that's not going to happen. They'll they'll uh, should that start to happen, they'll sweep it out of the way pretty quickly. But I don't anticipate that it will. What do you make of how uh, this uh, all of government approach, as Vice President Pence has termed it, has been working out so far? We've, uh, of course, seen a lot of discussions, uh, dozens of them in just the past few days between House Speaker Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin. At the same time, we had that uh, video conference between the president and the nation's governors at FEMA headquarters yesterday that seemed to indicate there's a, a little bit of um, a mixed response, at least as in terms terms of how the the governors see the federal government responding to this? Uh, I think that uh, two things. One is uh, I I have not been a bit surprised by seeing Washington work so well in a bipartisan manner, generally speaking, uh, in terms of in terms of what to do and what to do next. Uh, I was in the uh, in very closely involved in the 9-11 response on 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 at a senior level in the Congress on many levels, a uh, senior staff level in Congress on many levels. I uh, was closely involved from the private sector in, uh, uh, during the financial crisis. Uh, you know, people tend to come together on this stuff, and that's uh, largely a good thing. Uh, at the same time, there has been, I think, with the rush in Washington to focus on federal solutions, there's been a little bit of a disconnect in terms of how seamlessly the federal government and the state governments are working together and uh, and you're quite right to point out that uh, the, that bump in the road and i imagine that's being rectified as we speak there is no shortage of uh, and, and that bump in the road is due not just to the, for, to the federal side but also to the states uh the governors have every right to do what's within their own powers to address uh, coronavirus problems and issues, and they're doing that in a variety of different ways. And you've seen even in New York, for example, uh, disconnects uh, between the state government and New York City governments in terms of what ought to happen and how it ought to happen. Uh, so, you know, I guess I would think of it as uh, being in shakedown cruise mode, and uh, and these folks, I think, will very quickly uh, start working more in harness together. The president has seemed reluctant, at least at this point, to invoke the Defense Production Act powers that he signed. He's been saying that, you know, he signed it so that he could use it if needed. House Speaker Pelosi is saying, you got to do this now. What's your view on that? Should the president invoke Defense Production Act powers at this point? I think the I think the president will end up invoking Defense Production Act powers uh, at some point. Uh, uh, for your audience, 
Defense Production Act essentially gives uh, the, the president and the federal government the ability to direct any particular industry uh, to uh, move to a war footing and produce uh, war-related things. So, you know, you could, uh, you could, president could look at particular industry and say, now you're producing ventilators or you're, you're doing this, you're doing that, whatever it takes. And, uh, you know, there is a, what they're concerned about in the White House uh, and, uh, and the Treasury and their right to be concerned about this is if you're trying to get uh, the economy back on a good footing, uh, it, it's difficult to figure out uh what it is, how it is you should be directing things. And those those problems change constantly. As Vice President Pence pointed out uh, yesterday, uh, essentially there used to be a perceived ventilator shortage, and now apparently we're on the way already to uh, figuring out that there probably won't be for, for whatever reason. And uh, and that's a good thing. But, you know, seven days ago you might well have invoked the Defense Production Act for, uh, for something that, uh, that that didn't need to happen after all. All right, we're in this for the long haul. I hope we can check in with you soon, Terry. Thanks, as always. Terry Haynes, founder of Pangea Policy Advisory. Follow all the de- latest developments on the coronavirus at VRUSGO on the Bloomberg Terminal or online at Bloomberg.com slash coronavirus. Karen? All right, Nathan, thank you. And S&P futures are up about 74 points. Dow futures up 685 and NASDAQ futures up 312. Uber is among the most active this morning, up 14.7%. So is Apple, up 4.6%. And Tesla is up 5.6% this morning. Bloomberg surveillance is straight ahead with Jonathan Farrell and Lisa Abramowitz. For Nathan Hager, I'm Karen Moscow, and this is Bloomberg. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's David Inglis. Let's bring in the CEO and president of the airline itself, Garuda Indonesia, head Irfan Setiaputra. Obviously, you want to understand how the situation right now is, is affecting your business. What? In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. Signals from governments. He's failed to gain traction. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com, and iHeart Radio apps, and Bloomberg Radio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. In this cycle, we've dealt with a lot of shocks. It's important to understand what the Fed can and cannot do. Finance. There's no asymmetry left in markets. It truly is a zero-sum game. We will get slower growth. I mean, let's not get confused about that. Investment. Very few investors want to own any energy to begin with. There's a great deal of uncertainty. People are trying to hide in safe places. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen, Jonathan Farrell, and Lisa Abramowitz on Bloomberg Radio. From New York. York City for our audience worldwide. Good morning, good morning. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Coming up on the program, credit markets suffering the worst week in a decade as California orders 40 million residents to go into home isolation. And Secretary Mnuchin wants monster stimulus passed by Monday. From the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio, hello Friday. Here is your Friday morning price action. Deep breath, what a week. Equity futures now positive by 2.8% on the S&P 5. 500. Big range overnight, as you might expect, up as much as 4.6%, down as much as around about 2.5%. In a bond market set up as follows for Treasuries, yield come in 16 basis points on a 10-year to 0.97%. Would you believe me if I told you that Treasury yields are basically unchanged on the week as the equity market is down around about 11% <laughs> coming into Friday? Okay. May- In the FX market right now, a weaker dollar strength replaced by a day of dollar weakness. The pound up by around about 2.59%. That's your price action. Here's your top story in the United States. 
California Governor Gavin Newsom ordering all 40 million residents go into home isolation. A three trillion dollar economy alone, the fifth biggest in the world, and Lisa shut down. Yeah, the, here's a conundrum for me this morning. Really, the fact that California shut down the entire economy, essentially, sending ripples through a lot of people's economic assumptions going forward, and the economic news seems to be getting worse and worse, and the market's response to that, perhaps, if we can call it the response to that, is positive. There seems to be a dissonance between the economic news and some of the progression, some of the developments with respect to the shutdowns having to do with the coronavirus and the market response. Well, let's pick up on the economics first. I think this is a really, really tough spot to be in to make any forecast about how this economy trends through the rest of this year. We spent two months debating the scope and severity of the crisis. And now the big uncertainty really is about the longevity debate now. How long does this go on for? Every single second half call hinges on a pretty uncertain guesstimate about when mitigation and or containment efforts will no longer be required. And until we get a better picture of that, I keep going back to this. The longer this goes on, the more people will worry about this shock sparking a period of deleveraging, a bout of defaults that is going to weigh on growth long after this health crisis fades. And that's going to be the issue, the credit market and credit risk, regardless of what happens over the next couple of weeks. It's true. And I think a lot of people are really concerned that even if the U.S. government throws three trillion, four trillion, five trillion, pick your number at this, it's not going to matter. It'll just get eaten up if the virus isn't somehow stopped, right? I mean, that basically, that ultimately this is a health issue and that this cannot be solved economically and people are going to be home and disrupted regardless unless there is some sort of a solution here. We'll find the space a little bit later in the show to get in the weeds around the credit story, but can we just go through some stats, Lisa, yeah. for the week that was? I'll give you one. IG bond outflows in the United States. This is investment grade corporate bond funds. The outloads, outflows just smashing previous records, absolutely obliterating them. I'll give you another stat based on that. U.S. investment grade bonds have lost more than 13% of their value so far this month. Just to give you a perspective, at the nadir of the credit crunch, uh, when Lehman was collapsing in September 2008, the debt fell 7.8%. Just to give you some perspective of how severe, this is poised to be the worst monthly loss on record. Huge, huge credit losses rippling through this market over the last couple of weeks. Pleased to say the Wang in now. Steve Whiting, City Private Bank, Global Chief Investment Strategist. Steve, always great to catch up with you. Your focus on credit right now, how much stress are you seeing? And is it still too, too, far too premature to think about stepping in? Well, look, I think that there's some interesting dichotomies taking place that functioning in the market seems to be quite bad. And we can think about what some of those reasons are uh, in terms of secondary market trading for um, fixed income generally, not just U.S. credit. But we're also seeing primary issues. For example, we've seen a good number of corporate bond issues, investment-grade companies come to market. Uh, and end investors were there to buy those bonds um, at relatively reasonable spreads. Some of the um, stronger issues at lower absolute yield, higher spreads uh, than we have seen previously. You know, I think um, the credit issue is a whole separate dimension of negatives for the U.S. economy, something that must, you know, again, be prepared and for us be repaired and must um, ultimately should be targeted by policymakers as we have seen. But there are some just very interesting divergences here that I think have to be taken into account as well. And certainly the severity uh, that we are seeing in terms of just price action and, and outflows, you know, those sorts of things don't tell the whole story. Well, Steve, let me jump in. How do you draw a distinction between a market that's signaling functioning issues and a market that's signaling credit stress? I, it's very difficult. Um, and again, part of this is just coming to grips with how bad this shock is to the economy. Getting the news that we did out of, uh, you know, Russia and OPEC, for example, came at a time when we were vulnerable. And we were vulnerable because the uh, speed and severity of the shock has been moving, has been uh, very, very difficult to pin down, as you just went through the story on California. Um, you know, we know what happened in China. Its economy in the first quarter is about 5% smaller than it was in the year earlier period. You know, and that's after a good deal of growth. Um, and, you know, we have 16 million people working in restaurants and hotels in the United States, you know, which are just grinding to an absolute halt. Um, so 
uh, trying to figure out um, exactly what the environment is and what the credit default situation will be and what the policy response can be, right, to mitigate that. And on one side, it's the severity that, that comes from when the health system uh, is going to be a good enough shape for us uh, to, to emerge from our bunkers. Uh, and the other side is, you know, what we will do to um, essentially build a bridge over it with policy and, and help companies avoid those defaults. So it's a simultaneous equation. It's evolving very, very fast. Um, and I think we should be a little bit humble about trying to, to assess this impact, you know, beyond guessing. Steve, there is the fiscal impact and the idea of how you address the economic declines in the wake of the coronavirus, and then there's the functioning, the market functioning aspect of this, and there are a lot of questions about the Federal Reserve and their intervention. How much can the Fed backstop the corporate debt market as Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen come out and call for them to start buying corporate debt? So look, um, the use of special purpose vehicles, right, for troubled assets, as an example, in the um, 0809 crisis, and I think you know again they are moving faster to reignite these types of programs, um, and that sort of thing again will uh, make it I think faster for them to provide credit uh, in a way with uh, again the cooperation of Treasury. Um, I think we're showing some signs of success already. Primary dealer financing uh, facility, um, the commercial paper financing facility, these sorts of things, you know, that don't get directly involved in changing the Fed's mandate and debating, deba- debating that uh, can be helpful. And, you know, in the fiscal response, I think, again, importantly, how much you spend. If you can turn, you know, um, what might be long-term unemployment into a short-term furlough, you will save money for the taxpayer on this. By making this, the more overwhelming the response is over the short term, the less I think that you will will actually cost uh, taxpayers ultimately. Steve, when we talk about the outflows, John was mentioning the unprecedented outflows from investment-grade bond funds, the unprecedented losses in both investment-grade and high-yield bonds, there is a question of what you do as an investor, and, and, you know, John was referencing this, which is, when do you start to nibble at this? Is the move to just go to cash right now? Is that just the playbook for everybody, including yourself? I think no. I I think, again, selling into illiquid markets at potentially fire sale prices, you know, is something that you you want to avoid being in that place in the in the first place. Again, you want to have a portfolio, and I can't say that that's what everyone has going in, but that you could live with regardless of how irrational market pricing may be. You know, how far, how bad this goes uh, in terms of irrational pricing, you know, we can't say. You know, what's the low in the oil price? Well, give it away for free. Um, that's the low. That's how uh, you can't really say for sure that you will be able to sell a particular asset at a particular period of time. But if you have enough high quality uh, assets uh, going into events like this, you don't have to sell now. That's been the advice of City Private Bank going into this. Uh, and uh, I think it would be a bad time you know, to sell investments if you didn't uh, you know, make big mistakes going in. Hey, Steve, great to catch up. Appreciate you taking the time to get your views on the air this morning. Steve Whiting there, City Private Bank Global Chief Investment Strategist. Some of the views in the market and much more coming up over the next couple of hours right here on Bloomberg Surveillance. For now, let's get you some headlines, some news worldwide. We can do that with Michael Park. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, John. Good morning, Lisa. California Governor Gavin Newsom ordered that all of the state's 40 million residents go into home isolation to avoid the coronavirus. Newsom says, as individuals and as a community, we need to do more to meet this moment. If we're to be criticized at this moment, let us be criticized for taking this moment seriously. Let us be criticized for going full force and meeting this virus head on. Newsom said that it is projected as much as 56 percent of the state's population could be infected over an eight-week period. President Donald Trump complained that the coronavirus outbreak could have been stopped in China, further escalating his dispute with Beijing. The president spoke to reporters about the validity of the information currently coming from China. As far as uh, believing what they're putting out now, I hope it's true. Who knows, but I hope it's true. The president again characterized the pathogen that causes COVID-19 as a Chinese virus with the term corona crossed out with a marker in his prepared remarks and replaced with Chinese.
Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr sold as much as $1.7 million in stock just before the market dropped in February amid fears about the coronavirus. Senate records show that Burr and his wife sold between roughly $600,000 and $1.7 million in more than 30 separate transactions in late January and mid-February. That was just before the market began to fall and as government health officials began to issue stark warnings about the effects of the virus. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. John, Lisa? Michael Barr, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You would have heard us say yesterday that initial jobless claims is set to become possibly the most important economic indicator on the planet in the coming weeks and months because it will give you a high frequency read on how the labor market in america is progressing and if you want a much higher frequency read on how the labor market is progressing lisa you can get a little bit of transparency around state claims individual states will give you some numbers on what initial jobless claims they look did like. then they came under reportedly and this i stress reportedly in the times. new york times that apparently the administration would like them to no longer do that and just wait until the claims number comes out at a country level Every Thursday. Correct. They basically instructed, the Labor Depart Department instructed state officials to do nothing more than, quote, provide information using generalities, like it rose a lot or a lot, a lot. I, I struggle to understand why they would do this, because they'll still release the claims number every week. So we're going to find out. So I'm not sure why they would do this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to delve into the realm of speculation because, of course, my mind uh, started going wild this morning when I was reading all about this and trying to figure out what the motivation could be. I think that the concern here is that the narrative could get away from the reality, or that the reality is going to be really terrible in the short term, but can be fixed. I am not sure what they're trying to achieve, but the lack of information, the lack of transparency. I'm just going to weigh in here, well, arguably worse than the situation because people will absolutely mistrust everything that they get out of Did the Did you see the Goldman guesstimate that yeah. came through? More than 2 million, 2.2 million jobs lost. I really hope it doesn't come to that. From New York City this morning, good morning to you all. Looking forward to being with you through the next couple of hours right here on Bloomberg Surveillance. With Futures Positive, we are live on Bloomberg Radio. <laughs> Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Millen's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you 